All right, welcome to the Sebe cast number 37 with Lopsy and Sekon. What up, Kings? Yo. Hey, how's it going? So, <laughs> I actually wanted to scream. I wanted to scream when you were doing that. <laughs> I know you did, but as soon as you know the recording's live, you get a little bit timid. So listen, um, this is the first time, so those listening, this is the first time we've ever had a Sebe cast with two guests on at once. So just... Uh, I guess to let you guys know, I wanted to get two guests on that had already been previously on a Sebe cast just so it didn't feel like a guest. I don't know. Almost like I didn't want to get like two new guests on and being like, oh, you guys can't hold your own, you know, like you guys got to come on at the same time. So I figured this would be the best way to test out a Sebe cast with two guests. And I hope you guys enjoy this one. So let's get into it. How you guys doing? Good, good. Oh. Yeah, it's been an interesting day thus far for me, but yeah. Lopsy, what did you get up to today? I just worked, but hang on, hang on. I feel like when you say that about like, you know, two people coming on that are new, I feel like you have like the duo, you know, like the the streamers that are like go re really well together. Like for instance, like Lake and Puggin. Lake like and Puggin would two, be an amazing duo. But that would be. Maybe I overthink it, but I would love to get both of their insights exclusively almost that's true yeah you know what i mean yeah yeah like i so feel like you those... saying that genuinely anytime you bring on a duo guest for the first time ever you don't care about their individual thoughts you care them about it no no no. that's what i sort of feel like maybe i overthink it maybe people don't yeah. look at it that way but i just see it as i want to get i want to hear individuals perspectives without it being tainted i don't know if that's the right word but like without any other influence i just want it to be like a one-on-one -on -one discussion that's and I think, so. I think they're just different types of casts, right? Yeah, like having two people in one. I, I, I honestly like. I would love to air Puggin and Lake together, and also them individually. I think they'd just be different casts, right? Oh yeah, I don't think it would. means like you can't necessarily hold your own. It's just a different type of cast you're putting on, I suppose. Yeah. No. And who's so, another duo that you guys can think of that you'd be excited for? Uh, um. Honestly, like Addy and Rocket after like their um See that would Royale. be cool because I've already had them both yeah, on. Yeah. And so there's I, no I, sort of awkwardness like this guy has been on, but this guy hasn't, and now like he knows yeah. the drill and he doesn't. So like that would be a really cool combo. I wanna get Molgoat Kirby on. I think what would be cool is to get Molgoat on and then get Molgoat and Addy Khan on. I think they're like two huge gamers and so it'd be cool yeah, to like hear both awesome. of them. For yeah, a serious well. answer, I would love to have Tip, Ari, and uh, Hauke on. Dude, but I want to get Hauke on exclusively deep. first, and Tip would be a, a really cool guest to get on as well. A lot of the people know of Tip, but they don't, haven't like heard of him, really. Like, they haven't heard he, him. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I feel like he's not probably known in the main, like, by many people, but yeah. he's definitely, like, one of the biggest... He's such an innovator. He's so yep. creative with his thoughts and like, no, but the reason why I say together is because they're going to do a group iron together. So I think yeah. in the future with like group iron as well, you can probably do a lot more like team casts. True. You get on a whole group iron team. Although like, like five man though. teams would be, that would be too much. <laughs> yeah. Guess. As a meme answer though, I'd like to get Molgo and DJ on, on the same cast. So DJ has to sit there and relive not being able to do the first Inferno in least. <laughs> <laughs> He choked it so hard. Do, yeah. do you know why he went live that night too? He didn't even want to go live. He accidentally went live when he meant to just record. wanted to just record it. Yeah. 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 He he was uh, coaching Riv last night. Like, Wait, he went was, live like... thinking he was recording. Yeah. On yeah, the and then yeah, people were DMing him like, "Hey, are you gonna read chat? Are you gonna say anything?" And he oh, was God. like, "What, dude? I got paranoid." So. Second, I know this is like a little tangent, but when we were a little bit, a little bit toasty, you know, dude, yeah. when the, when the anxiety started hitting, I thought, I thought our entire conversation was being like live streamed and I didn't know about it. I seriously like <laughs> stayed up for like 30 minutes thinking like, dude, I got to check my stream. Like I got to make sure like I wasn't <laughs> streaming that. Old yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. 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 That's my anxiety. I, for you. I closed OBS as soon as you called. Don't worry. <laughs> um. God. No, and not even from your part. I thought maybe something had happened where, like, I was or something. 
I yeah, was, I know. I, it, it can. I, I think Adam once. I think I can openly say this, right? If not, we can always just edit it out. But Adam, <laughs> like when he would do capes, he would like record some waves just to see, like just to scout essentially, right? Like yeah. if he was doing a pure cape or something and he was worried about a wave, he'd just scout it. So he was always worried he'd accidentally hit live. The, yeah, the right like next to each other. And it would just show <laughs> stream him doing a cape. So, but yeah. I think he put on the, like the, the warning that you're going live. So that's not yeah. really been a concern but you know what let's let's kind of talk about that that has been a discussion uh i guess in the community for years about cape selling and buying and foe was on the sebe cast recently and he even had his own opinion thinking that if jagex if jagex can't handle uh or if they can't like actually catch everybody if they can't enforce it well enough he thinks that cape selling yeah should be totally legal so what do you guys think about all that stuff suck on your part of church you, you should probably go oh yeah me okay you um first. so i guess i am kind of tainted in in a certain regard like bias naturally that uh most of my friends <laughs> are cape sellers so yeah i mean i i definitely do think it should be see it's interesting i'd imagine actually it demands more of a premium because it's it's something that's more taboo and you can get banned and going through the right service, like someone who can do it remotely versus, I don't know, uh, setting up a VM or, I don't know, logging in and doing it. Like maybe that demands more of a premium because it's a bannable offense right now. But regardless of that, I I actually do think that it should be allowed. I, I don't know. I, do, I, don't, I don't think it just Jagex as a company with their limited resources for old school RuneScape. I don't really care about Joe Blow buying a cape. I don't think it should take up any resources when there's other things that they could be going towards. In my personal opinion, I don't know. Everyone can obviously differ from that, but I feel like a lot of people in the community have been talking about the game. And I mean, I think I addressed this in my last cast as well. Like a, a large amount of the community seems pretty doom and gloom on the future of RuneScape. And I don't know. I feel like resources could be allocated in a better way. Again, like to preface, I am pretty optimistic about the future, but. I think that's one regard that they could probably fix right there. What do you think, no. Lopsy? Um, I, I'm pretty for it, honestly, uh, because of like the reasoning of like, right now, if I had never done the Inferno and I had no time to play, like right now, I have barely any time to play this game. I um, uh, I work a lot, and then when I get home, I actually I go to school two nights a week. I get home, I have homework. Um, so it's like. I have zero time and for me to make the commitment and let's say it took 200 hours for me to learn and do the Inferno. That's a lot of fucking time playing like two hours a night. That's a hundred days of playing and trying the Inferno, like one attempt a day. So I totally get it for the people that already have, you know, their career set and they're doing stuff and they're playing this game as an enjoyment and they want to enjoy the perks of having that sick looking Cape. I don't think it's any different than buying a fire Cape like from back in the day which yeah. Bodhi used to sell on stream just do people's fire capes for them um i think the real problem that they're um running into is uh it being the real world trade aspect after the fact of the cape being sold so it's you know that is its own problem in itself but i mean for me to say yeah give me 250 mil and um i'll do a cape for you that's that should be I think completely at that point it's a trust trade of like you know you're you're getting the service done or you're you're believing you're getting the service done I'm believing I'm getting the 250 mil or whatever the case is yeah I don't know if what do I'm you think about it I, I don't know if I'm like educated enough on both because I just I just I don't spend time thinking about this really but I do agree with the point that if it can't be enforced fully then it just shouldn't even be in, like you just pretty much I don't know like you say take away the allocation of resources there and put it somewhere else but at the same time i am actually okay so this is another thing i had mentioned in one of my rambles like a year ago was saying this is back when account services were a thing i just said either account services should be a thing or they shouldn't be. like account sharing not like services exactly but 
you shouldn't have somebody else on your account. It should either be like fully legal or it shouldn't be legal at all because there's too much like gray area for things to happen like infernal capes for example and ranks you know when account sharing is not legal for ranks but then it is legal for anything else pretty much except for like infernal capes and who knows about all the combat achievement tasks and stuff like some of the combat achievement tasks are literally harder than getting an infernal cape so where are they drawing the line of where of how you can share accounts because is account sharing still legal and is it just services that are illegal now yeah you know what I was thinking about like uh, a couple years ago when alting was like super big for Iron Man was there there was streamers borrowing people's main accounts to alt for them. Isn't that account sharing for ranks? Wouldn't both accounts then have punishment to be enforced? There's no like, way of ever saying if it's for ranks or not, which is so dumb. Like people could literally I mean, argue you're a top 50 player in the main game and you're not competing for ranks because you already missed the top page like you know but you still are but where do you where does anyone draw the line if you're a front page iron though and you're borrowing people's accounts to do slayer for you to splash uh, as an iron man wouldn't your account have action taken against it as as it's not an intended obviously back then nobody nobody was saying anything the people that were complaining were the people that didn't want to make alts and the people that you know capitalized on it were obviously rank chasers so it was like this like like nobody said oh this is bannable they said oh it's wrong like this this shouldn't be but i remember fucking people found the found you were able to win a duel against your iron and just like as your iron an item. and yeah. just get any item on the iron and then those accounts were getting de-ironed and banned well i feel like one okay so this is actually pretty interesting in the sense of, well, one, Jagex, Jagex's Im- ambiguity when it comes to rules is kind of, I don't know, it's it's obviously discomforting because you don't know what's going to get you banned necessarily. Like, I mean, you could even touch on it with probably like, I don't know, people like Rundamento who like use bug abuse. I mean, tick, technically, one ticking is bug abuse, right? So obviously- I don't think that's considered bug abuse anymore. If Jagex themselves have said that's a game feature- yeah, but like there that's what I mean though, right? At one point though it was bug abuse and then to a certain degree it became normalized. That's like true. taking something was bug abuse. So I feel like as long as you're not hurting another account or like hurting anyone else's game experience, maybe that's where they draw the line on that. At least that's what he's been saying. And then when you talk about, I don't know, account services or something, to make it so nitpicky, I actually don't really like that. Like, oh, if it's not for ranks, then it's fine and I think they should just have a clear stance on if you can or cannot account share cuz then you get into this weird muddy area. And I also yeah. feel like there was something else that Lopsy just said that I was going to touch on, but I completely blanked. So I'm sorry about that. What I did feel. You just say, Lopsy? Uh, um, uh, <laughs> I said something about. Here, I'll, I'll, uh... I'll bring in something while you think about it a second. Okay. Um, I was just going to say in a perfect ideal world, I would love it for all account sharing to be bannable. Like, I just feel like you should play your own account and not let anybody else play it. And then if you do bannable but obviously that can never be enforced and that is also like so i don't know trying to look at it both ways like unbiased that is kind of a selfish thing for me to say because like i play that way but i feel like runescape's always been that game where you achieve the things on your account and nobody else touches it you know so but that can't ever be enforced and i wouldn't want them to spend all these resources trying to enforce that because it'd just be weird and a lot of the time, it isn't necessary. Like a, a, a level 60 account trying to get his IRL friend to get his fire kit. Like, no, I don't care, you know? Nobody cares. And that's like the point with the, with the Infernal Capes. The reason I don't care, I kind of cared when it first came out. Because obviously, I want people that have an Infernal Cape to have earned it themselves. But now, it's just been out for so many years. Like, nobody... It's almost as if it's a fire cape now, in my eyes. Just because it's been so long. I don't know. I have a question for Loppy for a quick second. Like, do you feel like you're uh, a casual player or more of someone who... The reason why I say this is because I feel like I was someone who was casual growing into someone who was taking it, like, I don't know, playing the game quite seriously. And now I feel like I'm pretty casual I, again just because of my carpal tunnel situation, right? I had the same kind of... It, like, Wayne's and Beckons. Like, whenever I get super into this game, I get, like, to the point where, like, 
I have to do everything efficient because my goals, like I'm an efficient, inefficient player. I do the efficient methods, but I'm not going to sit here and play for a six hour session. I'll play for like two hours doing efficient methods. And then I'll be like, man, I want to go like watch a show and relax or I want to do this or do that. I, I do not play like when I didn't have a job <clears throat> back in like 2018 to 2019 or 2017 to 2018, almost 2019. I like this. All I did was play this game and do like max efficient raids and stuff like that. So like that's when I would say I was like the most hardcore, like efficient, quote unquote, efficient player. The reason why I ask that is because I feel like your opinion, most people's opinions will probably differ regarding like account sharing or whatever type of like, I don't know, however Jagex's stance, depending on any rule, maybe regarding account sharing or like services yeah. or whatever, right? I feel like for me, I can understand it from all the different perspectives just because I feel like I've been a different player at different times. Um, so as an overall theme though, it's so interesting because you may you may think like, oh yeah, so this is a competitive scene or whatnot, and we got to respect that integrity and keep that integrity. But then also just being so casual about the game, like let's say your friend logs in just to like, I don't know, like teach you, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like what if your friend just logs in to do something and yeah, if you're so casual about the game and it doesn't matter to you that much, then it's also, yeah, kind of I like, mean, that's... do you deserve to be banned or do you not? Right. So that's like when I was learning Zora, I, I had, I was literally had my friend's account that I was using because he had like max stats and I was not there yet. And he was like, just learn it on my account. I have really good gear and stuff. And then, you know, it made, made my time learning Zora easier because I had already done it on his account. So back when Infernal Capes could be banned, like buying, getting services done or getting an Infernal Cape done. Oh, well, I guess it still can be banned, but like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, back when it was more, the community more as a whole agreed that you should get banned. Uh, was it someone, there was some streamer, I can't remember his name exactly, I'll ask it in a second, but he basically used to log into, get an iron, and he would log into a friend's account to learn, not to actually get the cape. So he'd get to Zuck and like he'd just die before... You know what I mean? The guy already had a cape and he was just using his account to learn. Is that something that should be banned? Is, if, if like, do you know what I mean? There's yeah. so many little niche micro scenarios. That you, you, know what's, you know what's funny? When uh, Sebe was just talking about it, um, I don't even remember what, you, what wording you used, but back in the day when I logged into my account on a friend's computer, like being at his house, I thought I was going to get banned for account sharing. Like yeah. way back in the day. That's 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 how serious it used to be. I feel like. Yeah, it was. Like you it was you more had, serious. you had to worry about when where you logged in at and like the frequency because like, if somebody just if you change address too, I mean obviously it would probably show that your billing information has changed back then, but like now they have like no way of checking that considering, almost I don't know how many people actually like pay for membership I, I i pay for membership on my iron just because i don't want to ever have to the inconvenience to log in on my main and buy myself a bond but my my main's all through bonds my ultimates through bonds like everything's through bonds now so yeah there there's I, probably a lot of different ways jagex realizes people are account sharing like a lot yeah. of hours being played and probably like i'm assuming this is just me based off of nothing because i've never had to deal with it but probably mouse movements and stuff and how you play the game and orient your game and just playing a lot probably like sends off some detection i feel like they have that type of bot detection like uh self-learning or ai type bot detection in rs3 and it's not really in implemented in osrs because i remember i don't know was it reading or watching some like documentary regarding i think the rs3 team used to hire someone who dealt in that area or was pretty knowledgeable and then essentially like he got he got a more lucrative offer elsewhere and he couldn't really provide the same services to osrs so again i wouldn't have the knowledge so i don't even know why i'm bringing yeah. it up or talking about it but yeah i knows? feel like as an overall if i'm going to be honest just jagex for the osrs side of things seems pretty incapable of catching like people who bought or people who do a like ahk legally like not one-to-one -one or people who do get services done and i don't i don't know Obviously, like, botting is not necessarily something that should be allowed in the game just because it hurts the economy for mains in so many ways. Do you know what I mean? And it's yeah. part of RW3, or R RWT. 
But then again, like how far does the conversation go that if it's not truly enforceable, like should we even bother allocating resources to it? Yeah. No, that's, that's, it's just everything's so gray, I feel like. And going back to the point I made earlier of just, I think everyone should just play their own account and you should never have anybody else on your account. That's actually like a rule. They say like, you shouldn't have anybody else on your account. I'm trying to, you know what? I want to look this up. You guys can talk about something. Uh, I should find this pretty s quickly. Yeah, no let's, have a, let's have a talk about the stronghold security where it states that rule with a door that you have to then answer the question over and over and over repeatedly. The same Who has questions. a bank, man? Actually, no, we probably shouldn't talk about this because then they'll, the people will be hacking my account. Yeah, no, I have a bank pin. I... Yeah, no, I have two bank pins. Yeah. So I have 806. Oh, wait, that's an authenticator. Man, it's actually kind of like, look, I didn't want this to be so pessimistic, but I don't know why, Jake. It's like, how many years ago, two years ago now that they released that thing about they're going to talk about account security and nothing's come of it? Oh, well, they're going to they're gonna post a blog here shortly, and, Um, two years ago. Yeah. I, I hate to, as an overall, I want to really convey this feeling. I feel like the community as a whole will get up on something and like meme the fuck out of it, and it just kind of blows up out of proportion. But one of the few times that they haven't done that is definitely the account security thing. Do you know what I mean? I feel like the community as a whole, yeah. maybe just on Twitter, maybe just on Reddit, maybe just everywhere. I think everyone in general, if I'm gonna be honest, like really wanna meme the fuck out of something and blow it out of proportion. But the only thing that has, that probably like isn't being blown out of proportion is account security. It is God awful dog trash. Like what happened to say Aloe and stuff? And yeah, I guess you could say he, he obviously wasn't active, so he couldn't notice him getting hacked. And But even if he could notice, like, even if he was active, what would it have changed? Uh, then they would have just fucking spam logged him until he couldn't log in. So yeah. I want to just bring this up now that I found it. But um, it literally just says in the RuneScape rules, each account should only be used by one person. Never share your account with anyone else, as doing so will likely get the account banned. And then it says players may not sell trans shells, sell, share, transfer, or lend their account to anyone else. Players should accept. Players should not accept an account that anyone else offers. And uh, yeah, so it literally says never share your account with anyone in the rules. But it's like everyone's just like, oh, it's not a rule. Like there's you know, but like it clearly states never share your account with anybody. But you know. I feel like the thing, what's probably the circumstances that have probably happened to this is that they probably got pretty, at a certain point, they started becoming lax about a, a rule. And then people started truly exploring all the options that can come about from that, yeah. like be it alting, be it, be it any type of service you can like get done or whatever. Right. And now they're trying to like, per, I don't know. I feel like now that you've, you've explored it's going beyond just your friend lending you an account, lending you an account to like learn something or alt with something. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's gone to like people getting services done. So now maybe that's why we're exploring more of the gray area, if that makes any sense. I don't yeah, know no, that's people. true. I I don't know. My stance on it currently, and it'll change. I tried not to solidify too much on a fucking children's medieval game on like certain stances, and I try to be pretty fluid with my ideas and beliefs on what should and shouldn't you know be a rule or whatnot but i really do think at this point in time that people should just play their own account and if you play a different account or you account share in any way i feel like you should be, i feel like that should be a bannable offense and you know it can't be enforced properly but at the same time at least it would like discourage people and if you did account share and there was proof of it then of course action would be taken but that's my own opinion right now. I would love to hear other people's in the comments as well. Okay, this is going to be tangential, right? But this almost equates to me like head use in sports, okay? I'm going to be honest, right? Like in my personal opinion, I don't I've always been curious if they just allowed ped in a, peds in a certain sport like what would happen, right? Like I'm going to be like with the NBA, it feels like uh players are told what when they're going to be tested generally and there's not much random testing after the rookie year, I believe. So if they wanted to use PEDs, I guess in basketball, they wouldn't really be, I guess most of the PEDs you use would be like blood doping, which doesn't really make sense in and of itself or just something to increase your cardio. But I guess what I'm trying to get to is like equating PED usage for ranks in RS, right? Like there's going to be some people who still get around the rules. So why don't you just open it up for everyone where everyone has the option of taking PEDs or not?
You know what I mean? Yeah. In a weird no, way, like, no. I, I totally opinion. see where you're coming from. But yeah. then the game goes crazy. I don't know. And I feel like that's the same thing that would happen to sports. If it was just fully legal to just fucking Do bad. dope yourself up. And I don't know. Just take steroids for everything. Like, I don't know. Like, I'm just imagining think- baseball or something. Just like everyone's fucking jacked and like i don't know i just feel like it's weird i think it probably just sends the wrong message to like younger kids who are in that sport trying to get to the league like oh you have to do pets to get yeah in. and that's what it would become and then like any sort of uh comp i, I know you guys aren't competitors i'm not really a, com- a a competitor in runescape but there are players that would absolutely despise something like that coming out it's like oh anything goes now you know because we can't enforce everything where just everything goes and then the game just becomes this fucking chaotic mess of people account sharing, people botting probably because at that point botting will just be like more mainstream. I have and an I, interesting. Uh, yeah, sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. Okay, uh, I was just gonna say briefly like, botting is huge. Like there are so many bots in this game, and bots are caught like every day. If if we believe what Jagex is telling us, like they are banning thousands and thousands of bots every single day and like you know but if if we like totally believe their statistics on everything who knows maybe they exaggerate a little bit but like there are so many fucking bots in this game they definitely are doing like work in that area but it's hard to see because we see bots every day too yeah i suppose we don't know how it'd be like if they weren't doing anything and how much more disastrous that that would be i mean obviously nothing's black and white there is a gray area that we have to exist in and I think in totality we should probably be be, be against botting, and I am. Trying to... Yeah, I I and I think everyone in this call probably pretty much is just because of how much it ruins the game. Yeah, and I guess what I'm trying to get at with the the grander sense of that is, just because it's not enforceable, I suppose it depends on just how not enforceable it is and what you're talking about, right? Yeah, like you don't want people to be getting away with murder just because you can't always enforce it. Yeah. So. So here's a question um, I have for Lopsy. Uh, going okay. back to the Infernal Cape thing, like let's just say you're a casual player and you don't have time to put in for a hundred days, like one attempt a day, or you know three attempts a week, or something like that, for however long to get an Infernal Cape, and so you think it should be legal. I just just to counter that, um, would you say? That is kind of the purpose of RuneScape is that it is a super long-term game and that's kind of the appeal of it, of not being able to achieve 100%. everything. Um, yeah, 100%. But then you have players that like... Um, I, I'm not trying to like uh, like cop out of, of an answer, but you have players that like play for leagues, right? They yeah. play only solely leagues and then they kind of like, oh, well, I could play this game pretty casually and just work on this, 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 this. And then they get to the point where that end game content in like a year or two and then... They don't have the time to put forth to, to like sit there and grind out. Because when I started Inferno, man, I was fucking horrible. Um, oh, it we took all me, were. like. I was. I had no concept of like what a tick was. I didn't know how to one tick. I didn't know how to do anything. And when I got to triple jads for the first time, I thought like, I think I'm dying. Like I had the worst panic attack of my life because <laughs> they were attacking so Jesus. fast. I, I thought I was dying. I thought I was dying. Jeez. And, um, yeah. Well, like from what i remember of this game as a kid like there was risk in everything you did like you could just lose you could die and lose your stuff and like to me like that getting that far spending three hours or four hours to get to triple jads because i was that bad um that was like dude this is like the risk right now is like i was shaking i was like this is risk all my time is on the line right here i could just fuck up and just get one shot or or you know have one hp after and then die the tick after because i'm overwhelmed so like yeah with 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 what you're saying yeah it is the grind the game is about the grind if you're not going to do the grind that's what uh the illegal services that are still in play are for and uh yeah it's just i don't think there's a point to i mean self-accomplish self-accomplishment is like everything to me uh i i don't feel um I don't feel good. I don't feel happy. I don't feel satisfied if I'm not progressing myself. So personally, I, I don't think I could ever buy a cape, but I, I do see that side of the story of like, like my best friend, he works 14 hours a day and just has no time to play the game, but he still wants to do 
all those things and have those benefits. And so I don't know. I see both sides of it. I personally, I would not agree with like on my account, I would not buy a cape ever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's, there's those people out there that do see themselves as like, Oh, everything's not on, it's, it's just not on my side. So I'm just going to take the easy way out for this. But yeah, that's just personal. It's interesting. There's a lot of people who will buy a cape just to like learn it. And what I mean by that is like learn it on task. Like I never the saw the point of that though. Well, like the thing is, right? Like let's say, like I don't know, let's say Zuck's your brick wall or whatever. Imagine going back on task. Like that. Oh the, yeah, that yeah. That's it makes different. it so much easier just because like having less sets. Yeah. So, I feel like no. I feel like Zuck isn't anybody's true brick wall. I. I mean, yeah, it could There's be seen guy, that way. I guess Riverton's I mean, failed Zuck multiple <laughs> times. Yo, you know what? You you should no, and it was right my now. brick wall too. To be fair, I died four times as Zuck. I got it my fifth my fifth attempt at Zuck my first time. Like you should the, pull up Riverton's latest tweet. Okay? I I watched and it. It's like it's painful. Yeah, I think to watch. you commented on it. You know the best part about it. You should play it for them right now if you can, and they can hear the the, the voice. Be, uh, they can hear like the audio of it just because you can hear Cummy in the background molding. He oh, he's pissed off like... that he failed it. Yeah, because right? like Cummy stayed up till like five a.m. or something <laughs> just to help Riv, and he had work the next morning. All right, here, 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 here. I'll play it for I'll play it for everybody. Okay, be quiet. Here's the clip, everybody. Okay, that's not full screen. Don't tag it. Don't okay. tag it. Shit. Keep it. Yeah. Tag major. Just hit it. This is painful to watch. Yeah. You're fine, you're fine. Your shield is very healthy. Okay. Hit. Don't rush, don't rush, don't no! rush. Riv. No! No! What was Riv, once? What the fuck. Oh my. I just choked you so. <laughs> I know you guys yeah, can't hear but... There was one tech. I didn't even. Th is it done? I no! can't be asked. Hold on. <laughs> Okay, that's fun. It's funny because, like, anybody that's ever done the Inferno and died to Zook, like, totally feels that pain. Yes. So. I felt that pain 15 times on my iron with going for the RCB cape. Wait, did you did you have to get to Zook 15 times to get your yep. first cape? My first wow. six attempts, I died to Jad because I, I fucking, I don't know what was the problem with Jad Zook, but, like, as soon as I realized, like, I had one corner I had to be long range, like, yeah, one corner I couldn't that's hit, be like, rough. it was just, like, the met. I was just, like, playing a mental game with myself of, like, okay, you're going to fuck up, and then I'd fuck up. I wouldn't even fuck up, like, attacking him. i just, like, oh, I have range for Yon. Oh, he's attacking with range. Fuck mage. Oh, fuck range. And then I'm dead. Yeah, so, like, yeah. that shit, that is what got me the worst was uh, just, like, that mental game with myself of, like, I'm at the final boss, and, like, the final boss isn't the hard part. This is it. And then, like, one time, fuck Mez. I fuck Mez with the biggest capital F you could fucking find. And, oh, my God. He just said, I, I finished triple jazz, and I was doing my, my usual milking. Cold one was hyping me up. And he just said, all right, go die to first set now. And I said, fuck, I'm not dying to no first <laughs> set. And then I died to first set. Oh, uh, God. Like, you know. A minute and and forty five seconds into the into the the Zuck, I I was dead. I was just so disappointed. Okay, you know, so I got my cape on my first suck. That's sick. That's you know how many hits I think? How many, many guessers? Three. I'm curious. Okay, what do you what do you think, Loppy? Uh, you seem like a seven seven. To, you seem like a lucid dream kind of guy when it comes to tanking. <laughs> yeah, I think lucid also tanked five. But yeah, I tanked five. <laughs> See that and... that's what's crazy is I have to this day i i have never tanked a zook hit i have always been one shot every single time i've ever been hit at zook it has been a one shot i've never tanked it so i it had that curse i had that curse on my ninth kc on my main but i it took me seven attempts on on my main to get my cape okay listen i want to talk to you guys we have a lot of topics to, uh to talk on i'm gonna have both of your previous podcasts linked in the description so if you guys want to hear uh just within the past two months uh their individual podcasts feel free to check it out in the description but one thing we definitely need to cover is raids three rewards that we never got to with lopsy and then the thing i want to talk about right now though is combat achievements just leading in from inferno into a combat achievement so what do you guys think of the difficulty 
Have you guys done any combat achievements? Thoughts? Lopsy, you go first, and then we'll, we'll ask Sekon right after. What are your thoughts overall? What do you think of the difficulty as well? Honestly, there's some that are difficult to the point of tedious. Uh, there's some that are difficult to the point of repetition. And there's some that are just borderline well-balanced. I, I think the only ones that are actually stupid are KC tasks. Um, and I understand why they did it. Uh, but let's, for instance, like the perfect theater, that is that is going to take me more than, you know, 200 complete tries. And I already know, like, it's just going to be so frustrating when it's like one person that's fucked it up and they fuck it up again. And you're just going to be like, we're at Verzik. Like, how do you, how do you fucking it up at the last part? <laughs> and yeah, I, I already know, like, it's going to be, I think Addy put a meme on it, like, the fucking second day, like, Monopoly destroys friendships or whatever. And then, like, <laughs> RuneScape combat achievements make you want to destroy people's lives because it's so <laughs> fucking tedious when it's just one person fucks it up. I but did. I thought, like, the no, gauntlet. Sorry, let me let me just finish. Yeah, go I ahead. Like go the ahead. gauntlet ones were so good because like, I I was literally in, in the middle of doing gauntlet anyhow when they came out, so it was like, oh my god, this is perfect because, uh, like this gives me something to like go for while I'm doing this grind anyhow. And then the speed tasks, I died on like 110 corrupted gauntlets trying to get the 630, and that wasn't even like the one that I found hard. I found the sub four minute one to be even more hard on the regular gauntlet because. It was like the the mat the mix between RNG and perfect playing, yeah. like where you had to have like above RNG on like your layout and hits, but you had to play it like perfectly every time to even see if you were getting close to it. Yeah. So I thought I think it's it's well done and it's a good way for you know to get people to do content uh, for the time being while there is like this mini drought of content for at least for like PVM side of things, no raids, no leagues. Yeah. So, I don't know. I think it's good. I think it's a healthy healthy update for the game as well. It's funny because there are team tasks, but they're only team tasks that can be completed as an Iron Man. So, like, raids. Those are, like, mm -hmm. the only ones. Because I, I was thinking in my head for some reason that there would be some crazy God Wars things. Like, I don't know. Things that involve multiple people, you know? uh like, yeah well, maybe completing a certain amount of kills within a certain time limit or something i don't even know how that's like possible but it for for a main it's actually a good thing that iron man exists or else there probably would have been a lot more tasks that are like gang up on this boss and kill like kill bandos within 10 seconds or something you'd have to fucking mass or, it or something the kill bandos in three seconds and everybody's dh bombing and just <laughs> yeah, like just whoever gets like melee is just fucked like that that was so much fun i don't know if you were in the clans like back in the day but like i don't know 2016 is when i started playing and i was in a clan and as soon as i got eight like was able to wear ba uh, barrows gear they were like all right we're going to bandos and like and the whole clan <laughs> It was just dh bombing it was just like one of those things that like you'll never forget when like fucking grardor spawns and within three seconds he's dead and everybody's just dh bombing the rest of the minions that's so funny okay second what do you think of combat achievements i mean your impressions and how much I have you done overall how much have i done i haven't done any combat achievements but okay. just um not the gauntlet ones have you not even well like i guess like i got i pretty much got all the sp all them minus the speed ones just mm -hmm. playing gauntlet just doing them i never yeah. really tried from them i just kind of got them i remember i think you were there for one of them remember when i was just chatting shit with chat and like not paying attention at all and i got like perfect ton lift or something and i was like okay like i wasn't even <laughs> trying like what the hell yeah. i mean if it's like that michael about... scott meme where he's shaking his boss's hand just like <laughs> <It's> <laughs> no idea what he did <laughs> Yeah, I I actually thought they personally probably could have upped the difficulty on it just because I got it just doing gauntlet, but um but you are I good at the gauntlet. Like you got to think of the full player base. Like you've actually spent quite a bit of time there and you being able to complete it isn't representative of like a normal person, you know, trying to learn gauntlet and get to that point. Yeah, I suppose so as well for sure. Um, as an overall though, again, I don't know the specific difficulties for tasks and such, but I think that uh, overall the update, I'm pretty happy with it. I think I spoke about this in my last cast as well. I think a lot of people that I spoke to were pretty pessimistic about the update in and of itself, but I think it was a great update to add during this kind of like lull that we have just because of COVID. 
Yeah. Um, I also think a lot of people, um, how do I say? I think it reinvigorated people to do content that they hadn't done in a while, which is obviously a good thing to do. I personally don't like specific tasks like the Casey ones as well. And I like Lopsy agree and understand why they added it. Um, I wish there were, I feel like there's some really weird tasks that make no sense, but I think that's just something that's going to come with the territory. Um, as an overall, I feel like, I don't know, I, I'm happy with the update and I guess I'm not really going to bitch too much about there being bad or good tasks or whatever types of tasks, just because I suppose this will eventually lead into what I was, another thing that I wanted to talk about, but as an overall, I just kind of want to see Jagex just keep releasing things and not necessarily get too f like bogged down by the numbers, the specific tasks or specific, I don't know. You know, like, you can always polish these things after the fact, but I'm just happy to, to see them release something. Yeah. And, like, yeah, some of the tasks are stupid, but, again, you can always polish those after the fact. So I think with time, it'll be also interesting to see when there's new updates into the game and, like, without seeing the player base... See, I feel like right now when they pick these numbers or picked whatever tasks, they, 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 they have a healthy amount of data to look at the player base and kind of judge what what tasks might be doable and what might might not be mm -hmm. um and what tier they should fall in but i'm gonna be interested to see what they think about how they release combat achievements for future like for raids three right yep like how are they gonna know what falls into grandmaster tier or like yeah and i don't think they're gonna come out with it on release of raids three that it'll just take a couple months for them to decide what are viable achievements and the other yeah. thing is, like, there will probably probably be something like complete 100 raids 3. And then, like, at that point, if as long as you've done the content within those past few months, you'll already have completed that task. Yeah. Which would be nice. But Okay, so what do you guys think of the rewards behind combat achievements? Do you like that they're pretty underwhelming for the higher tiers? Um, and you could a answer selfishly or not. <clears throat> so, I... I, I suppose, like, visually, the Zuck helmet should be at the top, but I also think it looks not that great. I think that Jad helmet looks better, but that, I guess that's subjective. I think I Zuck helmet actual... looks fucking bad. I think it looks make you makes you look like fucking Sauron or some shit from Lord of the Rings. Yeah, no. it, <laughs> some total badass. Yeah, it makes you, like, again, what it stands for in the game as well is also really cool. Um, I think that there should have been better rewards, personally. I mean, if you're going to go out and achieve something like that, that's so tedious. I suppose the visual rewards for some people might be enough, but I will I don't know. say, I okay. So, just to interrupt that, like the helmet thing, the Verzik helm looks horrible. I feel like, first of all, they should have just deleted that one, and they should have made it like the, uh, uh, they should have made it like a. I don't know. I think Tav is just the wrong thing to do. I, I think they should have made it look like the Jad transmog. Sort of. I don't know. I just feel like it should have been like Jad and then like the transmog Jad sort of look into the Zook. I feel like the Verzig is just completely out of place and it just looks bad and it, it makes you look like Zurg from Toy Story 2. Anyway. <laughs> like we literally came to that conclusion. It, it literally look up Zurg. And then look at that helmet. They look the exact same. Sorry, when you say Zerg, I just think of like StarCraft, but I'll look it up. Okay, yeah. Now look up Zerg on, uh, I think that's his name. Oh, Z-U-R-G. Yeah, something like that. From Toy Story. Just look at look at his helmet and then look at the Verzik helmet. Yeah, they do look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Okay, but what do you think, Lopsy, on the uh, rewards? And I guess I'm mainly talking about Master and Grandmaster because I think the prior four have pretty good use. So I kind of like them being underwhelming. And it's just kind of like that, you know, the helmet is basically like, yeah, I did this just to look uh, like. A beast. Like, this, like yeah. Like yeah. I'm, you know, what? it gives me like uh, month one Infernal Cape vibes. Uh, you got your Infernal Cape in the first month, like you were a fucking gamer. And yep. like right now you have that Zuck helmet, you're a fucking gamer. And I just I don't know. I think it's a, a good trade of like I I don't know what what would be a, a good enough reward for doing shit like that. Cause like you're obviously you're already making the money of, of doing the raids, doing like you're like 
having a better money maker from that, I just don't see a point of that. And then also like just simply put like what other teleports do you need in this fucking game right now? What other what do you need more than what you already have? Okay. Uh, I think side tangent by the way. Did yeah, you guys know James was the first Iron Man Inferno in the game? I the only reason I said that is cuz you mentioned like one the one Inferno. Yeah. But yeah, no. Um I, I honestly didn't see the what was so bad about making the hilts like be the best off hands in the game at like higher tiers. Well, first of all, those hilts were pretty like they were good in certain areas, but it was just such uh you know what I feel like they should you know have cool they should have been attachments that? to a vernix and just added a little bit of accuracy, a little bit more because I feel like having to bring two of two fucking offhands to everything would have just been so obnoxious like oh we got a spec with our dragon warhammer time to pull out this hilt now time to put on this hilt like that so alone would I, have been annoying. I think it'd actually kind of be in like a cool concept to have something that's like no strength bonus but just a shit ton of accuracy. Yeah, and that, it was a cool it. idea, yeah. Um I don't know. So, like, I guess this is going to touch on different areas of the game for me. Like, I, I, the type of game design I would like to see. And, again, I'm not going to speak on the fact that I have a lot of, like, I, again, I don't know the numbers like someone like BC Guppy or Port Cazard. You know what I mean? I don't, yeah. know, I don't know the true. I don't have great. I, I'm not going to say my ideas are great is all I'm trying to say. But I, I'd like to see game design hidden away with, like, you know how, like, new raids armor is coming out? Yeah. And um, I like the idea of having like similar tiered armors for the same type of attack style, attack style, like range, mage, or melee, but they're tuned in a way to be more niche use rather than just being like, yeah, Arma is the best range armor in general. You're going to use Arma or like, you know what I mean? Or like yep. Ancestor is the best mage armor. I don't mind having niche use things in the game, but I can also understand why a lot of people probably don't because it, I don't know. As no, for me, it, it's like, I yeah. don't think this game is about nostalgia anymore. It just kind of isn't. Yeah. And... No, I agree with the niche as in, like, I like the niches where it comes to attack bonuses and defensive bonuses. I don't like it when niches become, now this class of monster is now best with this weapon. But I totally agree if you are trying to, um, say, you know, super high accuracy mage bonus and then super high damage. Or not super yeah. high, but like higher damage damage bonus but lower accuracy like things like that do you like the relationship that melee has right now with inquisitor and bandos yeah but inquisitors needs to be a little bit better and uh i feel like it has a lot of use in the game like i see it in raids i see it again you'd yeah. have more knowledge about this no it, it does but it, it could be better and the reason is is because um there's like certain weapons like for example a ham joint would it, it would have been so cool if a, a ham joint got a max hit from wearing full inquisitors but it doesn't because the passive damage percent increase doesn't even make the ham joint ever possible to get a max hit. So there's like things yeah. like that. And then the other thing is uh, it's so fucking squishy that it's like not even viable at Serb anymore. Like it barely is. Like you'd honestly be better off wearing full bandos in an arc light, which is just really sad because it's a crush based boss. But they're coming out with other things that are just way better. The arc what if things itself. were like numerically balanced similarly but almost like you could take an option of how you wanted to approach something do you know what i mean like i i don't know i kind of like that idea like again you already touched you hit the nail on the head like you know um balancing things with accuracy and like strength bonus or yeah balancing but things with they, defense or whatnot so i don't know if you listened to the the previous cast last week i didn't PC catch Guppy. the Guppy cast he was yeah. he was I talking about thought you weren't gonna do a cast yeah, we I wasn't gonna do one, and then I got BC Guppy on as a secret guest, and so okay. we just did one without topics. Uh, but we basically just talked about raids three. I want to talk to you, Lopsy, now, uh, because according to you, you haven't looked at the raids three rewards yet, but you had your own ideas that you wanted to share. I haven't looked at like anything for raids three. I heard it was announced, and that's kind of all I've all I've looked at it for. Okay, um, so I want to hear your ideas. But one thing that was really cool, and kind of going back to what Sakon was just talking about, was there's this new thing called the, um, let me think what it's called. Uh, Osmumtens Kopesh. And you it's, know, Kami actually told me how to pronounce that. It's Kopesh. Kopesh. Oh, yeah, I guess it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. Um, anyway, that <laughs> weapon is, uh, 
very cool because it has like a minimum damage. So it basically is, it, it's sort of like a niche weapon where let's say your max hits a 60 with it. Then what it'll do is it'll only makes, it'll only make its max hit 51 and then its minimum will be a nine. So like if you hit, you are going to guarantee hit at least a nine up to a 51, but you won't have that like 60 potential. So it's a very consistent weapon rather than like super high hitting. So it's a very niche sort of weapon. It seems really cool. Does that make it so you always hit like, for instance, like old man? So turn? one of the best things about it is I'm not sure about Olm's hand because I think you have to do like a minimum damage or something. But the cool thing is at Nilo Room, because those crabs have zero defense, oh, yeah. you will guarantee one shot them. Because oh, I mean, unless you sick. miss, but I don't know if you really miss against zero defense things. Um, maybe, yeah. but I'm pretty sure if you rolled a zero damage, you would just roll the nine. So do you actually... This is a question for those gamers listening. Do you, if something's zero defense, do you ever miss? <laughs> I'm actually like, I, I think, I think I we're think all just too dumbass to like. I think you can. No, roll I mean, we can look up the formula and figure. Well, it out. I know you can roll a zero, but the the fact that your minimum is a nine and that would literally be the zero that you're rolling. Yeah, I don't know about that then. Okay. Yeah, yo, BC Guppy, yo, <laughs> somebody, quick, somebody in the chat or just in the comments is already gonna answer us, so we don't need to focus on it too much. But some gamer will just correct us. That's interesting. That's like the only other thing other than Bandos's range attack that I can think that has like a mandatory minimum if it hits. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I think Bandos's minimum is what, like fifteen? Yeah, 15, it's something weird. Yeah. yeah. Fifteen to thirty-five. So, anyway, sorry. Anyway, I want to hear your ideas now, Lopsy. I want to kind of oh carry into the segment God. of yeah, what like, you what were thinking. Ideas for raids three. Yeah. yeah. And we were talking okay. about this back in June, but we never covered it because we were like at the four hour mark of our cast. So yeah, I, we covered like one little idea in the deleted scenes. Um, but so uh, my like my prerequisite for raids is that it is insanely punishing. Like. Like you, like, let's say raids three has six rooms. If a teammate dies in room one, they are ejected from the raid. They go get their stuff from the chest and they fucking sit out there in their piss and tears and wait for you guys to get out or wait for you all to die. Damn. I think it should be insanely punishing. And like, I, I think it would be a much, I, I know they're not going to do that because they already announced that they wanted the skill floor low the skill ceiling high and i think they're gonna add in rage mechanics is is that um is that a uh, little idea there um but i i think that this you know how the last you know theater of blood was all combat chambers had this idea of puzzle rooms that weren't really puzzles as much as they were like you know a, a two minute time sink or an ice demon a, a five minute time sink whatever the case is so I think um, the puzzle rooms in this could actually be, um, in a way, like more involved rather than it be like you bounce this orb to this crystal, this crystal, uh, off this crab uh, into that crystal. Instead of it be like that, it's more reliant on your team. And in a solo, you could have it so that it's like a, a memorization game, kind of like you were talking about, like how you, how you were talking about the Fall Guys thing, like the the cards on the ground yeah stuff like that i i think there could there is so many ideas they could just rip from other games even to put into like solo puzzles like a game of snake with obstacles and you have to you have to in each corner this is a, this is literally an idea i thought of in each corner there's a little stand boost that you can run on a tile and you get a 20 second stand boost and your goal is to go in, around the entire room without stepping on a uh, the same tile twice and covering the entire room but you have obstacles where you have to look at the room plan your your path and then also perform the path and like let's say there's a three tick window you can't stand on the same tile for three ticks this is like completely like a made-up scenario of like a so like what you would do in a solo and i you could trans transfer that into team team raids and you would just have to coordinate with your team like okay i'm going up until tile eight you take down to tile like 10 like or like you put it in like a chessboard right you put it at like a through uh, like let's say i if there's that many tiles 
and then one through however many and then you say like where you're gonna just so people are are involved with each other as it stands right now like rooms in <laughs> the only the only talking you need to do in theater of blood is one zero one zero <laughs> that, yeah. okay i hit my spec or i didn't yeah like, like that's literally it dude there so, okay like, so there was a i'm just to kind of piggyback on what you were saying there it's sort of like the snake sort of variant there was mm -hmm. this game on crash bash where you would like paint your area with a pogo stick it's, oh yeah i know i know exactly what you're talking yeah about. you know what i'm talking about so what if yeah. there was something like that where i don't know there's like npcs that are also trying to fucking paint their little yes. areas oh and you have God, to run around awesome. and try to make your little squares and try to get these i guess just try to get better i don't know there the thing is this game is tile based like it's just tick based and there's tiles and there are so many cool things you can do with that and there i really hope they have some puzzle rooms like that yeah an, an I, absolute incredible amount i think uh it's interesting to try and so like there's two things that i kind of want to touch on with with raids there's different types of philosophies that you can have so i played a lot of like destiny uh, destiny one destiny two and in that they have raids there as well and the overall like philosophy that they had to raids was something that was so like every week you'd basically redo the raid you could only do it once a week to get the full rewards but every time you repeated it i think you just couldn't roll the rewards again or something but essentially, like the way that they designed it was on release of raids. They wanted it to be something that's completely unique and difficult and something that would take like 48 hours to 72 hours for the first team to clear and people would race for the first clear and stuff like that. And it, like a lot of hoopla around it. And also it would generally come with an expansion pack. Again, this is a different type of game, like a different type of style of game, I should say, where, you know, you'd have like a new storyline added and like new basically like a lot of lore surrounding it and then you'd actually have to like grind through the the storyline and to be able to like get higher tiered uh, gear to be able to finally do that raid but essentially it was like a week or two weeks of you grinding up to be able to do the raid and then actually doing the raid itself you'd have to like wait for teams to either figure it out or try and figure it out yourself and if you tried to figure it out yourself you guys would like coordinate breaks for when to sleep so you guys would be able to wake up and like figure out the raid together do you know Jesus. what i mean I mean, so that's like, sort of what again, it is, right? I mean, on release, people have to wake up at a different time. Usually, it's like 4 a.m. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it's similar, but not to the same degree. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's also because it's a different type of game. Like, that's that's kind of like the one few moments where that game is very popular. Or do you, How do I say it? Like, many people are hyped for the game. Whereas, I feel like with RuneScape, there's, generally speaking, a lot of, you know, it's just such long, grindy game that... There's always something going on in the game for everyone's account to be doing something, where it's with a game like Destiny, right? You get new content, you you like eviscerate through it, then you have nothing left to do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There's very little reason. I mean, it is. It has some grind elements, but not to the degree of OSRS. Yeah. So like on the, I'm I'm kind of curious what I guess I guess what I'm getting to is I'm kind of curious what Jagex philosophy for raid development is, and secondary, I think like with the community as a whole, or like with the player base as a whole, I should say. There's like a large amount of repeatability with everything that you do in this game, be it PVM, be it skilling. It's all static in the sense that if this happens, then it like rolls from a set group of static things. It, there's very little variance and like true flu true randomness in the game. When I what, what I'm talking about is like with puzzles, I suppose. I feel like all the quote unquote puzzles in this game are just solved. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yep, they and, are. They they're pretty like once you get in the pattern of it, it's like that's it's not why even necessarily even knowing the pattern, it's yeah. just like knowing the spawn. There like, is so I guess kind of going back to that crash bash scenario, I guess because whenever I'm thinking of any puzzle room for raids three, I'm just thinking okay this shit's gonna be solved with rune light in a day, and then it's just gonna be just step on this tile, step on this tile, step on this tile, you know. Do yeah. This. But if there were npcs that you're competing with directly and they have random lines every time that they do like and so not that there's just like 10 variations but like truly they just go wherever similar to like how an npc moves around currently it's just like they have a certain range they go but they can just move randomly and just stop and whatnot i yeah. think that could actually add a lot of variety to uh 
the puzzles yeah. and just being like, shit, okay, I actually have to think right now. Like, he just moved here. Where am I going to go? So it's also interesting on Jagex's end, possibly, to have to deal with that in the sense that, let's say you do make a raid room or a puzzle room that is truly 100% unique every run you do, and it's not picking from a set variation, right? Yeah. Like, how would the player base, like, how would they respond to that in the long term? So, you know what I mean? yeah, and that's that's another thing that um, players don't actually like random things like that. Okay, so for an example, if you guys have done Sepulchre, Sepulchre would be so fucking annoying if things truly were random like as in you know those like blades that come flying at you were to be off ticked or something by a margin yeah. of a few ticks and it's just be some obstacles be just become like super annoying because you have to like really think about it that would make the content actually less fun in my opinion and the fact yeah. that it's pretty consistent actually keeps that engagement so and yeah, that's I, yeah i don't know it's tough it, i uh, that's that's the kind of downfall I see with puzzle rooms in OSRS, right? Like this game is, again, I'm not saying don't try anything new, right? I'm yeah. definitely not saying that. Um, I just don't know. Like, again, I think a greater mind than I would have to conceive some sort of idea where repeatability wouldn't necessarily, I, sorry, like true random nature of a puzzle room wouldn't, or like true random nature of anything in this game wouldn't take away in the way in, in a sense that a player might feel very defeated trying to do something right yeah i just kind of going back to like a puzzle idea one thing i had talked about in a previous cast was imagine a soda seg maze but it's not all just a red path but it would be red green and blue and so when you're on like the green tiles you'd have to be praying range and when you're on the blue you'd have to be praying mage so on top of you like pathing correctly You'd also have to know like the true tile of your character and be praying that prayer like while, that's while you're on, yeah. running, like while you're going. That'd I think really that would be really like that would be so difficult initially, but I think you just get the feel for it and it would become really fucking satisfying to pull that off. And yeah, I think what think... I think what would be really cool is if you did make mistakes, it wouldn't be super punishing, but if you were flawless you would have this fucking charge up or something. Like imagine you're charging up like a, a Dawnbringer for Raids 3 and you're as if you can complete that whole maze flawlessly, then your Dawnbringer is like super fucking charged and you just go through the room really quickly or something. Just things like that. Lopsy, you seem to have like a lot of ideas on Raids 3. Like what, did you have any ideas on ge like what type of rewards they could have or like? I'm no, I actually, I actually didn't want to go into rewards because I feel like it would hit it would be like my own kind of like agenda or like my own want for a certain yeah. type of thing to be in the game. That's a I good just decided thing. I, yeah, well I decided like, I like like with the bow coming into the game, the bow of whatever I'm holding. What is this? Fared in Heinen. We just call it Bofa. Fair, yeah. The yeah. Bofa coming in. I just, I, I'm using this at Siren and I'm, I'm one shotting these vents. Like I completed six, uh, combat achievements in one kill because i had just really good gear and like the bow just seems so out of place in the game that like i just don't think like anything needs to be added at this point maybe raids 3 has something inside of it that would make a need for another item to be better than what we have right now well, so okay sorry go ahead hang on real fast with the niche things right you know, uh, you have like inquisitors, like the the balance between inquisitors and bandos right now. I think that's good, up until, like, it it. How do I say this? Accuracy means nothing in this game right now. Like as it stands for like DPS, uh, max gear, max hit. Where that that that's uh, that's just inherently better. The only thing that's like changed that recently is the blowpipe being like so inaccurate with less, uh, less range strength. Like Adamant, have you done a solo with a blowpipe, a, a raid like a chamber solo, and shot mystics with anything less than like amethyst darts? It is like you are picking up the rocks on the ground and throwing them at their toes, and they are just fucking punching you in yeah, the mouth. Yeah, but to be so, fair, like. The blowpipe in most situations is better than a Bofa. Yeah. Yeah. So I uh, honestly just, I think the Bofa isn't as powerful as we all kind of thought. I think the issue is just that it 
doesn't take any charges. I mean, I know you have to charge it initially, which is a heavy cost, but like, it's yeah, really I... silly how like there's it's a literal bow and you don't shoot out arrows. I feel like arrows would have made it so you would have gotten yeah. less out of it by using rune arrows or amethyst rather than dragon. I think the range on it is also crazy because like. It, it, it's definitely better than using a blowpipe on vents and, and if somebody wants to calc it and say i'm wrong listen motherfucker i just shot two arrows in eight ticks and killed two vents bitch what is that i'd have to fucking run for those eight ticks to even shoot the next vent so like just the range the sheer range on it is just also adds to how insane this thing really is it was nice for the no tebow inferno Oh yeah, um, I can't wait to do tasks. I, I've been on this sire task since like before I started Bandos. So honestly, I think Rage Three could be a majority of puzzles and failure upon these puzzles. Okay, real fast, Sekon, do you know if like any clients can like predict exhumes, like in Zarpus? I think predict exhumes. I'm not, yeah. I'm actually not sure. I wonder if there is some sort of like. I wonder if the tiles are coded differently, differently in the sense that the code, so like, like if you the tile out code the, changes, the tile identity. If you yeah. could like figure out the tile identity, I'm sure it happens. As I actually haven't used, uh, I, like I actually don't use any like steroid or blue light, and yeah. I haven't done TOB in so long that I don't. So know. what I was thinking when when hard mode came out, and I was like, oh well, they've only allowed like this set amount of tiles to have exhumed on it. What I was thinking is maybe it's always been like this, and they've just they've put in enough random like they put in let's say a thousand different variations of however many i think it's like 16 exhumes that come out they've put in a thousand different variations and no client i see i don't think blue light has it either and like i've used steroid before um but i don't think it has the ability to predict where they're coming from right so if they could do the same concept with some of like the puzzles that i have ideas from it would make it so that the puzzles are not click on this tile, right? Yep. And and that's what I'm afraid for Rage 3 to just be like, not necessarily botted, but basically botted because all you're doing is clicking on <laughs> the, the, the old meme of click back on two, fucking click on green. Like, like I, I would hate to see content that is this hyped up or that is going to be like hyped up or anything just fall victim to like, an overlay on your client just tells you where to click. That yeah. just seems so disingenuous to like the people that made it and like the, the players that actually want to experience the content and have fun with it. Yeah. No. So, and that's why, I mean, there is still something fun about, you know, I don't know, a fucking soda seg maze. There's yeah. nothing, there's nothing fun about a Zarpus beginning room where you just step in on those exhume things. But, uh, there is so much more like even if there was tile markers um for certain things you can make it so it's still engaging so it's like there's still timing to it there's still an, another aspect to it uh but like yeah, overlays like, are basically seen, inevitable have you seen like what steroid does with like exhumes no it fucking highlights the box and puts a 13 on it and then it counts down and on one you can click off it literally just puts a number on well, like it's, everything in the raid. Yeah. Well, it's pretty easy to just already fucking do that. I mean, I can see yeah. how that's helpful, yeah. but yeah. As soon as like the next exhume is showing, you can click off of your current one. That's basically how it works. But the fact that like an overlay just fucking pops up on my screen and just says like, oh, oh, click here for this many ticks, or this is gonna attack in this many ticks, it's just like that's it just defeats the whole purpose of a raid being challenging whatsoever right well isn't that the reason why it's a banned client or a banned yeah, well, plugin? Gonna, well, to, to get for you know what i just want to interrupt and say something on that actually if it's okay go i don't ahead. want to get on too much of a tangent just a mild thing like i hate right now how like if you're doing tob like off stream yeah <laughs> and they're just like hey you want to do a duo and they're like all right so sock it up it's just like it's kind of just expected right even though it's like bannable and it's yeah. a big no-no. Yeah, just and be then completely honest about it, like also, every fucking one uses client. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, like every, I, I mean, I don't know. I just don't really like that about the game right now as well. It, if, if you want to talk honest. about also like integrity of uh, like world records, speed runs and stuff, um, you you legitimately cannot get um, without client um, 
world record for TOB for or Inferno because of the NPC, the, yeah, NPC hider, yeah, yep, indicator or whatever. Which is yeah. really sad because, uh, I mean, Jagex should probably every... just do something about NPC deaths. They just, just gotta get rid of that. Screen. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, just, just make them not way. clickable at that point. Yeah, I don't know what that takes for for the engines engine to pull that off, but like, I mean, I watched Addy Khan's world record run, and like. He's using it. He's, I mean, whoa, whoa, whoa! He's not using it. He's got RAM taken out of his computer. Yeah, he That's took all. out the RAM. He he <laughs> hammered the RAM sticks out of his uh, computer. But anyway, I'm just like nicer. that looks so much nicer. Like that's just like that's how like it should be. I don't think there's anything wrong about that. It's just I don't know. It's what just I don't sad. get is like so like I don't remember who tweeted about it, but they said like it would it would. Uh, what did they say? It would be rude to the person who made the art or something if they just got rid of death animations. <laughs> it would but... be like it would be no. It's it's similar to the grotesque guardian start where they fucking force yeah. you to watch that intro because the artist spent so much time on it. I'm like, dude, yeah. nobody cares. Like, just yeah. Get us um, this. hang on. Let me look at these roofs. Right. Oh my god, there's roofs on buildings. Wait, why <laughs> the fuck isn't everything else toggle toggleable like this? Yeah. Like, oh, there's doors and houses? That's crazy. Not in mine. Like, why is why would you make, you know, the players suffer? Imagine if you had to open doors up every time you teleported to your house. That would be pretty bad. That would be horrible, yeah. Do you know how and, and you know what can the you reason actually is? Select? I actually don't remember. You, can you, you can. Like completely get rid of them or yeah. can you also yeah. just toggle them to always be open? Yeah, you, you can, can toggle, toggle both. Them, yeah. Closed, yeah. open, or See, they give you gone. so much variety. And then and then case. Like, imagine if you had to open your doors every time you teleported to a house, and the reasoning was, well, the artist made those doors. Like, yeah, really? I don't. That's is that reason? really the argument, though? That that's the I'm reason. I'm pretty sure not. that was. I'm pretty sure that was the tweet that was said when. Someone, that has to be uh, a meme. That can't be real, right? Like, they don't actually I, I care. <laughs> Messaging Unks Discord right now. Because the cool thing is, is you could still tweet. keep that animation. Just make it so you can't fucking click them. Yeah. Yeah, make it so you click the the item below it. Exactly, the, like that's the mob they, below it. In fact, that would actually make the game look pretty cool. Is if you still saw the death animation, but it was not clickable anymore. Like yeah, I'd actually play that way. That'd be totally cool. Rather than, um, yeah. Obviously, like mechanically, like the super gamers would love it to just be gone, but mm -hmm. it, as long as you just can't click through it, that'd be nice. Yeah, but what I'm saying too is like I'm pretty sure there's bug abuse right now in the current top world record where they all had shrink me potions and just skip the ma you skip the maze entirely when you use a shrink me potion when it hits 30 66.6 .6 or 33.3 percent HP fuck? and you're supposed to teleport to the maze they click a shrink me potion on the same tick that they they deal the damage and they just completely there's no maze you just go back to attacking soda sex so you have that entire section just erased from the game <laughs> what? because of a because of a I mean, minor... is there no is there no like video of this i'm pretty sure there is but i don't think it's public because it's probably bannable like the serb <laughs> thing you remember how serb they had that boat back there and, and you would spam click it standard you'd get ghost you'd standard to serb spam click it and log out before the ghost hit that was that was a quote-unquote bannable offense i'm pretty sure somebody got a two-week ban streaming that so like there's just little things that get overlooked by Jagex because it's not their main focus. I think now I don't know I don't know how it's going to be when quest speedruns come out, but I'm not sure why they aren't taking a more interested approach into something as, like that has longevity like speedrunning. Like any game can be speed like can have a speedrun community for it. Like even RuneScape, if somebody wants to speedrun quest, that's fucking crazy because I couldn't imagine like making a new account right now to get the requirements to do all quests and then speed run all quests or speed run this quest or speed run from account creation to Barrow's Gloves. I well, cannot imagine doing that right now. I have a question, actually. So yeah. I'm not really into, I don't watch Clint Stevens or anything. I don't watch any speed running shit. I don't, you know, I don't, mm -hmm. I just know it exists. But isn't that just pretty much commu community oriented in the sense that, fine, if you get a world record, you have to post evidence of you doing it, post the full run. And well, yeah, that's what I'm using. saying. Yeah, so I just feel yeah. like for, with Jagex's end, right? Like, what can they really do? It's just, I, I'm going to be, I don't really want Jagex, honestly, personally, wasting resources on finding every niche bug that exists in this game, but, figuring out if it should <laughs> exist in a speed run or not. 
right? so, so I feel like that should be the community figuring that out rather than Jagex. Yeah, here's this weird thing between like if it's not in line and this is like only with this game because people want to speed run things like Theater of Blood, but there's uh there's literal helpers that tell you where to click and what's happening when. What uh-huh. nylos are aggroed onto who, stuff like that, right? So you have all these these helping factors. Whereas if you were to use any of those helping factors in let's say a Mario 64 speedrun, your your run would be terminated and the entire community would say, What are you this is a game. What are you doing cheating in a game that you're so uh, quote unquote passionate about that you want to go for that world record? You want to claim you even got that world record. So it's just like that. The line between community and like what action needs to be, you know, taken by JMod. So the line between community and JMod would be that like enough people would have to report the, would have to report like that you know proof video proof of their world record otherwise it's illegitimate yeah and i i feel like it is kind of community run in a way like for example one tick flicking that if the community was just against it that probably would have been a bug you know and then they would have fixed it or whatnot but because the outcry is like oh that's fine that's cool because wooks did it and stuff like that like no but what i'm also just trying to get to say i suppose is man i don't really i don't think jagex should be the one like you know what in the game how they're like this is the best time sure like i guess maybe not keep that keep that i don't know but i think like publicly it's recognized that something is the world record or not that's not really jagex's onus to care about i think that should just be us as a community asking like i I know there's a speed run discord right yeah i'm not Um, really saying that like jagex has to care though i'm just saying like if there needs to be enforcement who how are we gonna tell like those accounts you know they don't have the world record other than removing them from the list you know maybe they could add something to the game that is community oriented like i don't know do you know what i mean yeah, like the yeah, time that yeah, is yeah. played publicly in the game is curated by a trusted group of the community and then i don't know i just don't think jagex themselves should be wasting i i, I suppose this is also going to tie into something that I've been kind of like towing around, but I might just get into. I don't see like I don't also don't want to re- interrupt you because I know we were talking about raid three, and I want you to be able to get that off. So, Do you want me like, to what are your off? specific? Uh, yeah, just pop. Okay, off. I want to hear. I'm what gonna your pop ideas off are. on raid three. All right, yeah. so I okay back to the idea of like raid three could literally be mostly puzzles, and this is my idea, right? The puzzles are ever changing. This is why I went on to that exhum thing. The puzzles okay. are ever changing, and like you can't. You can't expect what's happening. Like like how, how Sebe said, like everything has this, you know, random NPC effect or, or a yeah, previous like a true random NPC. seed that can't be predicted. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. Okay. Right? So I have an idea of like if a team if a single person fails a puzzle and the, the team continues on, the team has to either decide to continue or wait for that one person to do an unintended boss fight below the puzzle room, then retry the puzzle to catch up with the team. So okay. that that is like this team oriented thing where one person fails the puzzle, you either all drop and kill the boss faster so that you all get to do the puzzle faster, or you start continuing the raid and you just have little old Johnny behind the group, like running through where there's nothing, didn't get to experience anything. So the next time he gets there, he's fucking up the mechanics of that boss that they already are understanding and learning that that whole, like I want it to be for the team. And if it's a solo, if you want to solo it, I want the solo to be the same kind of aspect of like, you don't, you do not need to rely on your teammates to continue and you do not need teammates to continue, but you know, teammates are obviously going to help you. Um, so with all that being said, the precedent of being very hard, the unintended boss fights, puzzles being, you know, no more than like two minutes long. I think that I have a, I have a few ideas real fast. Okay. The path is what I called this one. Cause I have no clue what to call this. Right. It's, it's like, um, it's like the soda egg room, but you can see both sides. <laughs> And both sides have obstacles and, like, movable obstacles and just, like, wall outcrops that block you from walking a certain way. And the way this works is that 
there's a person on the light side of the path, there's a person on the dark side of the path, or there's like one person on the light side and seven people on the dark side. And the light path is going up and moving obstacles, but cannot backtrack more than two times. So they can't cross. If they step on a tile twice, it turns a different color. And if they step on it a third time, they'll fall through. The entire team falls through to one of those unintended boss fights. So I'm just going to say fall through. I'm not going to say that there's unintended. That's just the idea is that each puzzle room has a new boss underneath it. Mm -hmm. So the way this would work is like, let's say the room was five by 25, right? So it's, it's, it's a narrow path, but with where the obstacles are, you have to like push rubble out of the way. Okay. Well, now that you've pushed rubble out of the way, what's on the other side, the other side might not even have rubble there, but instead when you push the rubble out of the way, you've now blocked where their path is supposed to be. So you have to communicate with each other. I, I, you could do this typing too. And I, (laughs) It's funny because I was really into chess when I was doing this. And I was just like, okay, you could just call it A, B, C, D, E, and 1 through 25. So you can say like, okay, well, you know, B6, we can't walk on B6 on both sides. So we have to go, you know, uh, C3 to C C5 and then C5 to E7. Uh, so my okay. question, so I'm trying to imagine this and – so is this even possible to be completely randomly generated or are there just layouts that just can't be fucking solved? So this is, this is the thing that I was thinking of though, is like how the exhumes are right. If the exhumes are completely random, it changes my, my thought process on this. But if I'm the exhumes that they are pretty much pretty random, yeah, because but... like it wouldn't make sense to make a thousand variations in terms of time constraint when you can just pick a random seed and set it in a certain area you know what i mean that's fair yeah and that's what I, that's what i'm thinking though is like if if exhumes are like and i don't even mean like a random like uh or like a thousand variations that they all went through but like let's say they have it so like it spawns in the top left corner the top right corner and then by like the last ones like if client you know could pick up on it they would know like which ones were coming after like the you know seventh exhumed it's a de- it's a designated path at that point so, you know, let's say either way, right? If there's a thousand variations, you could do the same thing with this room. If there's not, then like you said, there could just be rooms that are unsolvable and you go through that boss fight and then it's a new room. But I don't think that's like a good way to do a puzzle. I think every puzzle room should be solvable. Yeah. I just don't know how you would do the non-client thing. Unless that's they an want to do a force uh like steam client only i i would genuinely love steam client only as long as it was up to speed with and that that's the that so just talking about clients in general i steam client's not good enough and that's my and of course everyone's gonna have their own opinion because there's plugins that people can and can't live without basically Yeah, yeah and uh for me like i am addicted to stretched fixed mode and gpu and all this other shit xbr if they added all that, you'd be okay with being on Steam Client. I'm just yeah, saying, but there's like the time two. I, I don't know, like that. That's asking a lot for them to add onto Steam Client, and then there's gonna be somebody that's not satisfied. So it's like, I am okay with Runelight being a thing, but I, I, I totally understand, like having one client, and if you're using anything else, then it's just banned. I, but it's I just still it like so this. hard to detect that. I just think of it like this, right? All these people using illegal plugins and using clients that they know they, they shouldn't, there's no way to get them to change what they're doing or to like get them caught unless they record themselves or stream themselves doing it, right? But is there any way to detect if you're just not using a certain client? Well, you'd have Steam verification. You have to you have to verify your account through Steam every time you log in. Mm. So that is like and, and you know what I thought of too is like I mean anybody who could write plugins could just inject your your game files with code but then you just have a, a vial or a file uh, verification it's just like how how like first person shooters check your your game integrity like your file integrity that it is in line with what they're looking for and that there's no external third party plugins that help you aim or that you know auto lock like stuff like that yeah but this so, all takes resources right you're talking about the resources. 
I'm not ta- I'm not hearing you talk about the ideas to capitalize the resources. Well, the reason why, okay, I don't, I don't, again, I don't want to interrupt your rates three thing, but like, I guess my thing, the thing that I actually wanted to address this cast focuses a lot on company resources. So maybe that's why I keep bringing it up. Let's hear um, about it. No, well, I mean, I want him to finish his rates three ideas. I that... got a lot of ideas, so I don't know how long this is going. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. All right. I'm just let, let, just okay. Wait, wait, wait. Let's hear. This. I want to hear about. Do you have any idea for weapons? Because here's the here's the thing is they already have discussed Raid 3 with the Summer Summit. And so... Did they discuss like rooms and stuff? They said that how Raid 3 is going to be working is there's like five rooms or six rooms or something. But you get to choose the order you go in. So like you go in. First of all, there's these invocations that you can set the difficulty of the raid. So there is no one difficulty. There's... You can literally check mark any invocations you want and make it difficult or okay. not difficult. And then there's like five or six rooms that you walk into. You can choose whatever order you want. And then at the end, there's like a final boss. Gotcha. Okay. So who knows what, uh, you know, they were. I think they plan to kind of have some sort of like sepulcher ish mechanics with like, you know, getting to the certain rooms. But I don't know how much puzzle based things there's going to be i obviously i hope there's some but do you have any the idea for one... weapons or uh rewards no i didn't no reward i didn't like yeah. i said i didn't want to like impose like anything that i i wouldn't be able to do the calcs on it myself because i don't care that much about like what comes into the yeah. game so like yeah i just there was nothing i thought of that like i thought that this would be you know sick to be in the game but what I thought yeah, of I was like the sick puzzles, man. Sick puzzles. Let's hear. Yeah, let's honestly, hear. You know what I want to add to raids three, what? or like raids anything or any future content in general. This is a complete rip off of what I found from Destiny, but it's almost just like you know the concept of Easter eggs. Yeah. So like in Destiny, when they'd release an expansion pack, they'd add a secret weapon every time, and they told no one how to get it, no one where to get it, like how you unlock even like going down the path of getting the secret weapon or like where the rooms exist or anything. Legitimately, the community would just have to figure it out on its own and they wouldn't tell if it, they wouldn't tell them if it's ex- even existed or not. See, I would love to see that shit in RuneScape. I would just love like that too. add something and not tell anyone, not a soul, like bring it in with raids three or whatever. And in the middle of the raid, like you have to like, like you, all you weird ass motherfuckers have to stand on a certain ass tile, pointing in a certain direction, casting certain spells on certain objects. And it's like a niche Easter egg. It like the fucking like floor like opens up or something and you descend into some like weird mystery area of the tomb. And like you get like sent on this group quest together or maybe like individual quests where you can unlock like a weapon that no one knew about. Like that would be so cool. Just yeah, complete theory would... crafting, throwing out some random shit there. I think that would be very cool to add to the game. I and I can see why a lot of people might be against it, though. So I also kind of like this uh, distraction and diversion aspect in the raid. So you're in the raid, and then there's yeah. like, oh shit, there's like something that's not really supposed to be there, but it's like a random chance of getting like some, there's like some special urn or something, and you can like waste your fucking time running over there. Or there's like, I don't know if you ever played... I've taken a lot of things from Crash Bandicoot, but there was like these little bonus levels in the actual levels yeah. you'd go into, and then you just go uh-huh. to like this little bonus area, and like it would probably be a waste of time, but like there is a chance of getting something like super rare. So, but I do like Easter eggs, and it'd be really cool if it was just like what the fuck, like nobody even expected this. Yeah, I think that would be really cool. In Destiny, the way that they did it is just like you'd get sent on this giant ass quest where you have to like unlock certain things. You have to go through different parts of the whole game, like different planets, different like uh, different areas in the planets to find a specific thing. So they'd go back into past updates and like add things to them. So when you went to that area and you like specifically search for this like trap door in a certain area, like it'd be there. And then you know what I mean? I yeah. feel like that'd be a really cool concept to add. Yep. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'd like to see that in a future update for sure. Actually, do you have any other ideas you want to hit hit on, Loppy, for raids? I just have like okay, I am a huge Zelda fan, right? And yeah. um the Spirit Temple is like literally what I imagine as like Rage Three. And um like I said, if if they've already like decided what the rooms are gonna they be They have not talked just, about like, rooms. I don't think they're planning yeah. on talking too much about them either. 
I mean, this is me just like pissing into the wind and just like, you know, getting covered in it. But like, I was <laughs> cooming. I was cooming to myself, thinking of like this. Like, <sighs> okay, I'll go. I'll go through like two of the the six ideas I have. So, okay. there's a scarab puzzle, right? Scarabs are are desert related, and um, I think this one could be like so ever changing based off of like prior rooms or prior boss fights that um that like no client a lot of the things i was thinking of was like no client should pick this up kind of thing right so like let's say like the prior room boss has like hieroglyphs on the wall and certain of them certain hieroglyphs light up at certain times during the fight and this is like you have to pay attention and remember okay you know this room might would just tell you yeah exactly (laughs) but it's based off of how long the fight lasts. And then this goes into like three, it's like a little little math equation, right? Hieroglyphs versus time uh, versus in the next room, you have scarabs. And the scarabs are like <clears throat> in different stages. Cause I'm pretty sure there's four st- stages of like a scarab. They're like larvae, uh, like the, when they break out of the larvae and then like, you know, so on and so forth. Um, and this is like kind of like a Nilo, uh, Nilo attack style, but you, you aren't, you are not using weapons. You're using the room to attack these, these scarabs. And each time you go in, it's a different attack style for each scarab based off of what happened in the previous room. So like, let's say the larvae need to be killed with melee. Well, now you push a, you push a gear and a fucking two two blocks of sand crush whatever larvae is in the in the in like the little like spawn area or you know you you press a you pull a lever there's flames that come out you you step on a trap door your agility level depends on if you dodge the arrows and kill them or get hit and kill them kind of thing like just stupid shit like that i just think would be cool because it's not your typical like okay hit put on my boss. trident Okay, yeah. put on my blowpipe, uh, you know, attack with my whip. It's like it's not it's not like that. It's like you have to go around the room and let's say you use the wrong style, the gears change. So now you have to spend eight ticks or however long it takes to use these mechanics or these mechanisms to figure out which mechanism does what now. So like I just think that they have so many possibilities with just as simple mechanic as like that. And like Maybe instead of it being based on the prior room, you have like a BA horn and like, you know, the fucking the god of Anubis whispers to you that, you know, full grown scarabs can only be killed with magic. So you have to you have to light the (laughs) fires of whatever, like like you have to tell your team like, oh, we have to light fires for this, like that, that type of shit. And. um, Yeah, I I also put in here like um, the locust. Oh, oh, I think they, they fully, I think like locusts or right, right? I don't know. I put, uh, I put on here, um, a row of tiles become not safe to walk on and it'll keep ever changing. Like kind of like the Galvec wave where like, except instead of it being like, oh, stay on this tile, you can either run past the tile or it'll move instead of it being that one tile that's, that's safe, it'll move up and down the row. So, um, and it's just like locusts that'll just hit you for like constant tens, uh, if you're standing in, in those areas. Okay. Wait, um, have, have you guys done Fasani's nightmare? Yeah. There's like, you know, the ending phase where there's just a bunch of sleepwalkers coming in and there's a bunch yeah, of yeah. black holes. You know what I think? Okay. So the <laughs> day one of doing Fasani's, I literally thought that that phase, you just had to keep fucking attacking sleepwalkers. <laughs> like <laughs> I wasn't attacking the boss at all. I was literally yeah. just running, and I was dominating. I was, I probably killed like twenty sleepwalkers, <laughs> and I was dodging everything, dude. I think the amount of fun I had in that one fight was like really fun <laughs> because there's so much skill to it, so much precision, yeah. and like, yeah. kind of like when you're gonna click. I think what would be so sick is to have like a room where the final thing, the boss is charging up, but the point of it is to not make anything go through the boss. Um, and so yeah, you have like five awesome. fucking teammates just dodging all this shit that's happening, little arrows flying at you and everything. And then you're just trying to not have these things come to the boss. 
I yeah, think be, that was be, yeah. uh, see that is something where it's like truly no fucking client can really do anything. You're not actually attacking anything. Well, you, I mean, you're killing the things that are coming, but there's like re- I don't know. There's like real skill in that, and uh, a lot of just fast paced, just go go go, don't fuck up. You know, a yeah. lot's on the line. I anyway, anyway, I kind of interrupted, but I was just thinking about uh, what you were talking was- about. You know shit coming in yeah that was basically the end of that that little idea there the other idea that like i would fucking love to see is a um it's like a shadow it's a mirrored shadow and like the mirror would be in like thirds of the room so if a shadow comes within contact of you like let's say you you run towards the center of the room like like you spawn on opposite corners, right? You you're in the bottom right corner, the shadows in the top left corner. But as you move, the shadow moves in a different way, so you have to figure out, okay, where can I place this shadow so teammate can, you know, pull the lever? Or in a solo, you'd be like, where can I place this shadow so that I can uh, attack this mirror with a fire spell or some shit and it hits that shadow. And like there's mirrors in the corners and this is like totally like two concepts of the spirit temple, like combined in one. Cause there's an area in the spirit temple where you walk in and there's like this, like shadow that doesn't move exactly to your movements, but it moves according to where you're at in the room. And the other part of the spirit temple is like, you're reflecting light into like sun into like sunbeams to open doors. This is like taking that idea, except now you're adding this layer of like damage Whereas if you move in the wrong, like if you have four teammates, let's say like you and three other people, everybody's in a different corner and where you move in the room can harm your teammates. Like you have to be aware of where your teammates are because your shadow will start attacking them. And everybody has two shadows. And one of the shadows is, is like bound to the exact opposite of what you are. And then the other shadow is bound to like this, I don't know how they did it or if it was like they did it like in a third in like in the actual Zelda game. But it was like if you went into the wrong side of the map, you kind of got cornered by it and you had to just like jump off the edge and like, you know, wall grab. But like in old school, it could just constantly attack you and just keep dealing damage to you. So I think that would be a crazy cool concept of like the teamwork needed or like the solo play needed of like knowing where your shadow's at the entire time and knowing where your teammate's shadows are. So I think that would be also one of the most sick puzzle rooms I ever thought of. And that There's, jacket, he's gonna implement yeah, now. It's, it's tough to say because I feel like the majority of the community just loves combat. Yeah. And like the I puzzles think that's don't like get enough cool, love. And because people don't... It's a don't cool under- way to... Yeah, but people don't understand how good puzzles could be because all they've had is ice, steam, and thieving, and <laughs> fucking crabs. Crabs is the yeah. only thing that was semi a puzzle, and there's like three layouts for it. Yeah, yeah, I I don't really get that one. If I'm going to be honest, like I understand it because it's OSRS. But maybe they were thinking like, well, they're gonna screech if they don't get some sort of some degree of like replay, like uh, repeatability. Do you know what I mean? What like, do you mean, uh, like with raids? Just because as, as like gameplay wise with crabs, like let's say it was completely random every time. Yeah. Do you think the community would screech about that? Or oh they... yeah, no, I'd be pissed off because then you just get yeah. real like omega fucked over, you know? Yeah. But so, but at the same time, um, or I was gonna, I, say, I don't know, yeah. I was gonna say something. I, I'm spacing it now, but like crabs was a good idea. Um. I'd yeah. be interested to see some of like Loppy's ideas yeah. come to like actual fruition and have. That I think that play. five by twenty five like little path that you have to go through. I think something like that that's that super so fast paced and randomized yeah. could be yeah. so much fun. And I just the only thing I'd want from one of those puzzle rooms is just that you could do them rapidly. Like once you figure it out, like yes, it's just that yeah. that is like essential it to it. So like yeah. randomization is good. Up to like a certain point, and it's kind of going back to that sepulchre argument. If everything was just off ticked every single time you go through, it would get so annoying. Like that wouldn't be as fun as it is. I just yeah, think of so- if you master some of those mechanics of like the puzzle ideas I have, you would just instead of you like recognizing like, oh, it's this layout, I have to do this, it's like, 
okay, well, now I just, like, change my path from the last time I did this by, you know, three tiles this way, and it'll line up correctly so that when I go six tiles, like, there's, like, an idea, like, there's a concept. There's, like, patterns idea. that you'd it's recognize. Like you yes, yes, Well, like, yes. You, master, you master a concept versus you master it's, a layout. Exactly. Honestly, it's like chess. It's like chess, where, like, you see a line that the enemy's taking, you're like, okay, well, now this line's weak. Yep. And it's, like, it's like, like that same thing of, like, okay, well, like, the way that this puzzle's laying out right now, it makes it so, like, I have to take this path, then this path, and then I have to figure it out from there. Yeah. No, I think the pattern recognition would be the thing that would, like, keep it super fast-paced for, like, veterans. But the randomization could still be there because you would just see, like, certain layouts and be like, all right, like, I mean, it would be well, random every time, but you'd be like, okay, this is something I know how to do, and then you just You know what on. a perfect example of that actually is where you master the technique rather than the layout? The soda seg maze. Like, once you learn yeah. how to do yeah. L's and, like, you learn movement, like, you just know that you can rapidly fry, fly through without missing a tick, right? Yep. But it's not necessarily, like, a set layout. You just mastered the concept. So, that like, a puzzle like that, obviously dialed up a bit, not just that plain. But do you know what I mean? Yep. Like, what if... Anyways, um, I might just move on to the the the, the thing that I kind of wanted to bring up, if that's okay. Yeah, let's hear it. Um, so I was talking to Ginger Beardly, Beardy of all people, randomly. I've never really really talked to him at all, and like one day we just found ourselves in a call like three days ago, just talking to each other, and we were talking because he doesn't play OSRS anymore, right? At all? Uh, no, he. From again, I don't really watch him. Yeah. I give him a follow after that night because he's a really cool dude. Everything about him's like actually really genuine and he's very funny and very genuine. Um but yeah, no, I don't know if he plays from the the vibe that I got from him, he's kind of just like pretty much turbo burnt from the game. Yeah. And doesn't want to play it at all and is just kind of waiting to see if there is ever like something he loves about the game, I'm sure he'll come back. But he's been playing Rust for the most part. Um yeah, so I'd kind of like I know on last cast I came in and I said I'm very uh, optimistic about the game's future, and this doesn't de de deter from that. I still kind of am. I suppose like one thing that I'd like to see changing going forward about the game, though, and this touches on resource allocation almost in a way, or like, um, <laughs> this might be controversial to many people in the community, but I also I I, I already know people will agree with the sentiment that maybe we should consider the community's voice less in the sense that, you know polls like polling everything is just getting kind of a bit much especially when something it's like i don't know 73 percent, and it just doesn't pass the poll and it's not never brought up again like i know i think people have repeated the sentiment on that but i think i'm gonna say something that like a large majority of probably the high level community won't agree with it's that i don't think we should care about creating the most polished product when it comes to release releasing something and what i mean by that is you can always rework something after it's been released, right? And I don't, I don't want things to be f like everyone in the community knows everything about something that before it's going to be released, and like all the numbers are as close as they can be to perfect. And we ridicule J mods for getting it wrong. Back in the day, man, I know it's a very different game, and we, you can say all that. But when Ginger Beardy was talking about like how when Hunter was released, they didn't know what the fuck was going on. Like, Hunter was just put in the game, they were, like, a couple weeks before they let him know. They're like, yo, there's this new skill coming out. It's called Hunter. Everyone get excited. PogChamp, the chat, or some, something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And people would, like, get up. So you should bring up a better example. Sorry for interrupting. EOC. That was great. Like, it just came out one day. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, but. Yeah, no, I get. <laughs> see, like, I understand why the community is the way that it is, yeah. specifically stemming from that game. And I'm not saying you should completely ignore the community, necessarily. I'm just saying that maybe you can judge the community's reaction after the fact, possibly. The or thing, change the, the issue. The fact. So I'm just, I, I agree with you for the most part, but um, I, I was trying a, to think of who the guest was. There was that, a grand thing that I wanted to get up to, though. Okay, like, wait, 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 one sec, one sec. I know I'm interrupting. I'm just taking your time, but yeah. the thing it was like when things come out, they cannot yeah. be deleted. Like nothing that's come into the game besides like fucking bounty hunter or something has ever been actually removed from the game. Yeah. So that's the scary part. But yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Just had to bring so that I suppose up. what I'm trying to get at, it's like with a thing with like EOC, I think there should be things that should be pulled. Don't get me detracted on that, I suppose. But I don't think like 
how do I say this? Like a content update. Yeah, man. Yeah. Like I think that's something that's completely revolutionary to the game and changes like the combat system is very different from being like, yo, we're gonna release a new Zaya. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like even though that's a big update. But essentially, like I was if you look at the updates in the landmass gained from like 2000 to 2007 or something or 2008 like you started with basically just fucking lumbridge maybe varrock as well you know not even all i think right and then by I, the I don't know about it, that but yeah go ahead by by the end of it if you look at the world map right now of runescape right just look at everything you have minus Saya. that is what you had at the end of like 2007 pretty much yeah yeah sure maybe you had fossil island added in but everything else for the vast majority like the expansion that they took to this game in terms of like adding content and adding like just areas in the world to like explore right yeah. that you got from 2000 to 2007 hasn't been matched from the release of 07 till now right and i think it's been longer since the release of 07 i mean well old school not 07 but the release of old school till now right yeah so i i would i i would really like to see more of a gung-ho approach from jagex on adding content and then refining the content as we go along. I I love the community for all it's worth, right? And I love that we know we want everything to be great and everything to be perfect, but I feel like it's almost like a bit too much of expected perfectionism. Do you know what I mean? Like back in the day, they used to just add shit and it either, you know, it either well, worked or it I, didn't. I, I still know. argue that, I think personally, yeah, they might have a little, I think the balance is pretty good. I do agree with you that it could be a little bit more mysterious. But, like, Inferno release, people knew that Inferno was coming out. People d decided, yes, this is okay to have, like, this item come out with these stats, like the cape. But then the Inferno was a fucking magical release. Like, it was awesome. And yeah, same I... with TOB, Chambers, like, all that shit. Uh, even though it's still discussed, like, all the rewards are heavily discussed and criticized and then eventually come to a point where most people agree with it. Like, I don't know. I think... I'd argue it's a pretty good system, but I do think what would be cool is to like, I don't know. I do agree with you to like add more stuff just that's not pulled at all. But yeah, and it's it's tough. I, I feel like it takes a lot for a developer to put out like, so when you think about time it takes to create something, right? I would say a large majority of the time is probably spent perfecting it rather than like coming up. And I'm not saying that it's, oh yeah, like 90% of the time is taking perfecting it. No, it's like still a large chunk. I'd say maybe 20 to 30% of the time or like resources invested are po probably put in the department of fine tuning and perfecting it beyond like a reasonable doubt, right? I don't actually think we have much of that in old school, if I'm going to be honest, but you know, I th I still think that the the resources used to try and like perfect a piece of content could better be served to just I don't know release other shit because I feel like Jagex is probably you know when they created that new uh, skill a couple of years ago like three years ago Morning. and they pulled it yeah they pulled it and like I'm gonna be honest it served a really important role that we do need still like an item sink like things to get items out of the game in terms of main economy and inflation and all that, right? Yeah. And they spent a lot of time coming up with the skill and a lot of thought, like a lot of resources only for it to be voted down. And voted down for the right reasons, for the wrong reasons, I'm not going to get into that, I think. But I just, I I think it can, I don't know. I, I really just do feel that Jagex is probably wasting a lot of resources, right? Just trying to figure out yeah. ideas to put forth to the community the, that have the, just gone to the wayside. I, I don't know. I feel like this this kind of like culture environment created is almost anti-growth for the game. But maybe I'm wrong about yeah. that. I'll just say like, so I talked to Mod Husky yeah. uh, on a cast and he brought up like some really good points of like how they learned so much from trying to release warding, like trying to push warding onto people. They learned a yeah. lot for like the next time. So like, a lot of things they've just learned so much. Like Nightmare, original Nightmare, it was a fucking mm -hmm. failure, like catastrophic. Like that shit sucked. And mm -hmm. uh, they've learned so fucking much from it. And when they do come out, because like the community wants a new skill, I'd say like the majority, I'd say over 75% of people probably want a new skill at this point. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm one of them because I'm 
kind of happy with like how it is but that's because i have a lot of shit that i i can play this game with like no updates for a while i really can but uh-huh. obviously updates are good for everybody so i think the way they're gonna pull a new skill is just like way better than how they did it previously and mod husky goes into it about like how that all happened but yeah i no, no, no i agree with like the sentiment of like what you said like the, the overall thing yeah, I think things can be polished after the fact. I just, I guess, I'm more like talking about the, the idea that Jagex just needs to be more gung ho with creating new things for this game. Like, imagine, <laughs> I don't know, man. Really, pull up the world map and then like look at Zaya, right? And then look at the rest of RuneScape, right? Like, that's all that they've added in this. Like, yeah, sure, you could say Fossil Island or something, but that's the vast majority of the land that they've added to this game. They're going to come Since out then, with Varlamore or whatever. Down I- here. Isles of Souls, man. What the fuck? Um, <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> Isles of Souls. God damn it. This <laughs> sucks ass. Okay, but um, listen to this. So Jimmy, the YouTuber, yeah, came out with a video, and I just scrolled through it because usually it's like, I, there's a lot of YouTube videos I just end up like just scrolling through kind of I don't have time to like watch everything but there was a point where he was saying like you got to come out with new things like stop reworking things stop doing this stop making other old things better just come out with new shit and I feel like a lot of people probably agree with that I like don't agree with that I'm like the opposite like I want old content to be balanced for like the game we have now like there's so many cool ideas that we already have that take like not much dev time that could really like be good for the game. And I know most people are just like race three, race three, race three. Like I thought combat achievements and like the Archaea spellbook rework and Fasani's nightmare that are all like super great updates. And uh I don't know what you guys' I agree thoughts are. Wholeheartedly that. that they're great updates, but I think that that differs into the mindset that most people have, right? And I yeah, guess it does. We could kind of like some people want to master content and perfect it some people just want to like get it done a little bit and be like all right i'm good i did this a little bit i want to move on to the next thing yeah no that is the community thing what yeah, do you I think like, yeah about um do you think hard mode well first of all i think we can all kind of agree that hard modes are kind of weird uh they're yeah, good i mean honestly they're fine I just hope that they give Rage 3 enough time that um, they can release a hard mode day one. So that Well, that's like the thing. There's invocation. So yeah, that is, no that is their modes. plan is yeah. so that initially you can basically go as a beginner and then also go in as a fucking master pro wooks, you know? Yeah. No, I'm on board for – listen, I'm not on board for like a new big – update about like you know random shit out of the game every month without like you know some sort of like intro to it you know what i hate that this game doesn't do is um engross you in the lore of of what's going Mm -hmm. on so um i i brought this up on stream like two weeks ago or three weeks ago where i was like dude when i played overwatch for like the short amount of time i did like they released a short video and like a blog post and it was like dude you watch that short twice over because there's just so much like the amount of like i mean this is like what second said there's just not enough like you know resource allocation to do this but the amount of like just sheer content to watch in overwatch shorts there's like i don't even know i don't i think it might be up to like 40 minutes of just straight overwatch shorts maybe it's an hour now but like you get this feel that like you're a part of like you're learning a part of like these characters lives that you've been you know interacting with or like playing as for however many hours you've played the game and i just feel like there's nothing that you know old school releases and that like gets you engrossed in what's going on you know what i felt in the most engrossed in the lore in this game was dragon slayer 2 because like that quest like actually had like sick dialogue and like and connections from like old yes yeah yeah It, it connected back to like a bunch of the old quests all like all together and it it just felt like this is this is actually a part this is it felt like this has been a part of the game forever and they've just now you know uncovered the stone that was like you like the timing was perfect for it right yep. 
what they don't do though is they don't give us any surprises with how updates work and i talked about this with a friend of mine booty sensei he he wa- he listens like all your podcasts but i don't think he says a fucking word so shout out that guy <laughs> um but i was talking to him about this and he was he was in agreement with what i was saying and had his own ideas um but i was saying like runescape updates should be halted uh at like like not every week there should be a polling period for two weeks. There should be a implement implementation two weeks later. And during that polling period is when they refine and, you know, work out the bugs of what has happened, you know, what they what they updated, what they didn't intend, all that stuff. I think that like the this like two weeks basically like you get a, a, a big update every month. For the next two weeks after, it's kind of like live play testing, and and then they get to refine it for those two two weeks after that, and then you know another update. So, I think there's a a better way to do the update system where we're not feeling like, oh man, another blog post I have to read because they're about to put a fucking bofa in the game again, <laughs> or or some some shit to that degree. Um, I'll be uh, honest. Thing- besides, like. I know Bofa. I had a strong argument on Twitter as well. Like, I really hated that Bofa was coming out. But now that it's out, it's like, eh, it's not that big of a deal, I guess. You know what I love about yeah. Bofa? I, over, I, I overreacted. Overall, I hate five tick weapons. So the fact yeah. that Bofa's four tick, yeah. it, like, soothes my autism. I love five tick weapons. Ugh. In fact, I'm Makes really excited it. for the Kopesh because it's five tick. It's oh, a one handed five tick weapon, and it's going to be, like, just really. I. So the Kopesh, just going back to it, that was the one that has like a minimum hit and then mm-hmm. like a slightly smaller max. But I really, and I might fucking advocate for this on Twitter, you know how a Halberds, like Halberds are the only things that can attack from uh, like another another, another tile, tile yeah. away. I really wish the Kopesh would do that. Have like a yeah, really have... powerful weapon that can pull that shit off. During leagues, I didn't want to flinch triple jads when I was doing my melee infernal cape, so I just used rune halberd I got from Serb. That was Pog. <laughs> Dude, that would be <laughs> that's a really good actually uh, a really good use for the Kopesh would be jads. I never even considered that. I'm I'm always just thinking of Serachnus because when you get stuck in the web, you can get that extra yeah. hit off. That Kopesh <laughs> would be fucking beast. And uh, I think BC Guppy was also hoping that it would be good for Corp. They, it could be like a spear for corp, I guess. Be qualified mm-hmm. as that. Can I just say I fucking love BC Guppy. His like um, his uh, passion for the game is like literally literally inspired me to want to max because I was like, yeah, there is a lot of fucking sick shit about this game. Like, I kind of want to explore like all those avenues that he talks about that he you know either founded or I I know he founded a lot of like PVM stuff too, like all those little avenues that. He, you know, spent the time to master or do the calculations on. I just, it's so fucking incredible, like, how, how the community is so involved in the game and how much they do love it. Yeah, he's actually awesome. I fucking love Guppy. Okay, listen. Yeah. We have Twitter topics, a few. <laughs> but mm-hmm. I want to cover a few, and this is kind of going to just switch gears over to streaming. Um. Mm-hmm. So, to E four go into streaming. <laughs> so <laughs> whale asks knight. Well, he doesn't even ask. He just says knight to E four. What does that mean? Um. Here, I'll post the emote. Wait, you haven't seen that emote, say? I, I mean, I've seen the uh, the emote. It's just that chest thing. Yeah. 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 I don't. I don't get it. I always see it. Just indefinitely one of the best moves you can make in chess. You just secure the center of the board with your knight. I mean, obviously, you can't just go there any time in the game, but secure the center of the board with your knight. Very powerful square. I actually don't understand the origins of that emote, if I'm going to be honest myself. <laughs> I just know I that. I don't either. I just I know that. Kumi, I think Kumi just made it, right? Like, yeah, yeah. No, I'm pretty sure he just made it when, like, chess was popping off on, like, the first Pog Champs on Twitch. And I was like... That is fucking hilarious. I don't know what's hilarious about it, but Cumboy made it. Well, it's and... just like a it. It's just like your. I guess if you're white, it would be like your your queen side, queen side. Uh, like you could you could get. I don't know. Again, like you say, I, I don't. What what is your knight doing on e four? <laughs> you know, like, like the, I don't know, like, like it is it is a it is a transitionary move from 
from your queen side, if your white queen side knight to make, I suppose. But like, wouldn't you want a more? Ag I don't know. I, again, it depends like what you play. Okay, but yeah, it's a weird move to make. It's like you don't want to develop your. You've already developed your knight. You don't really want to invest tempo into playing to e4. But maybe you're. I don't know. You know. Maybe yeah, oh, you know what? Court. You know what? I I never thought. It's a it's a great move probably if you're black. Like but it's a, if you're it's a white piece. Is it a white piece in the emo? It, yeah, it is. Why e is your knight going to e4? <laughs> Why is your knight going to e4? Yeah, no, I'm honestly actually there's this there's this line that you can play against the Caro with the uh, with two knights that that like ends up trapping their bishop and then even might lead to mate. So yeah, knight to e4 great move actually. In that specific line. Yeah. Okay, listen. It's just a chess joke pretty much i gather you know what's cool is like we all play chess we all three play chess we're all what's shit your guys rating right now i'm at like mine's tanked i'm at like 1220 on chess.com i'm at so my peak is 1300 on chess.com right now i'm 1200 i don't know 1200 what dude but... i need to why does your uh lee chess thing say you're like fucking 800 Oh, why does my Lee Chess thing say that? Yeah. I don't play. I So I've noticed one thing about me on stream. Yeah. I am so bad at doing anything on stream, be it Same. RuneScape, be it chess, be it whatever. Because when I stream, my primary purpose isn't to do necessarily what I'm doing. It's to just be dumb and like make yeah. jokes. And Nah, I but, can see that. So the, the combat achievements bad. definitely make me just want to play off stream because I can actually focus. Like those Inferno, dude, I could not have completed some Infernos on on stream yeah you couldn't have parsec on stream for sure that would have been a yeah you can parsec <laughs> on stream you know what crazy. i'll do i'll do a cape on stream because i'm actually feeling pretty con in fact i'll probably stream to sub 65 i think i could do that you got I, I when i so like i've been learning vandos flicking lately and like vandos tick eating yeah all right it took me so i did zami and let me tell you that was like getting my shit punched in at first because it'd been a while since i've done anything like remotely difficult on this game like three years i'd say and then I had Carpal Tunnel and all this and blah, blah, blah. I hadn't played for a while. So I'm like, you know what? I got a Zami task. I have a Bofa, but I'm not going to fucking use that shit. I'm going to flick Zami because, I don't know, I'm a gamer. I, for the first, like, two days, I, like, I had a lot of fun flicking it, but I wasn't doing that great of a job. And I got my shit kicked in a lot at Zami. And then, like, by day four or five, I kind of got the hang of it. But it still wasn't fun because it just feel, felt like... Zami would just dumpster you when he decided to. You know what I yep. mean? Like, I didn't, just didn't really enjoy that. And I still, I'm not going to say I was good at Zami by any means. But then, like, I did Bandos. And so it took me one day. Not even, actually. Like, when I went to Bandos, by the way, from coming from Zami, holy fuck, Bandos is just so much easier, so much more enjoyable. There's just, there's so many aspects of it that, that I just liked more. Yep. So within a day, I felt pretty comfortable with flicking. So I moved on to tick eating. And then at first, the motions for the third time you get hit so like in that five tick cycle you yep. can get hit on tick three four or five when you get hit on the fifth tick and you have to like flick range then tick eat then you flick mage yeah like at first those motions just like froze me up and i would can, can like plank oh yeah like, it's, like, it's it's yeah. terrifying when you're not so, like comfortable when i was messaging Tukin though he just told me to like stand at a bank or something and like kind of go through the motions and so when you're at bandos it's not like something that's foreign that you have to do in the moment so after I did that, honestly, it took me like kind of two days to feel comfortable with tick eating, from the f including the first day that I started. And so by day three, like I was tick eating bandos like no problems. But as soon as I turn on stream, okay, I can't get a kill flicking for some like. <laughs> it's and like then... it's like playing the piano in public. I so I am really shit at the piano, but I learned a few like crappy songs back when I was in like mm -hmm. high school and stuff. And I'd master them basically when I was alone. But as soon as I had to like play it in front of somebody, oh, just total choke. Couldn't fucking think. It, it's not even necessarily like the anxiety that I might have felt, which uh, sure, I'm going to admit to a certain degree it probably is. Like wanting to always be good at the game or like showcase that you're not like a complete shitter. <laughs> but I think for me, it's just like I have this. So when I was first doing uh, Corrupted Gauntlet, the same thing happened to me. Like, I could not read chat at all, and I didn't care. I was just going to keep reading chat until I plank. Like, I would just plank endlessly. So, like, uh, an example is when I first learned uh, Hunlif, I did it off stream, and I went, like, 60 completions at Corrupted Gauntlet and, like, 10 deaths or something. Yeah? I started streaming, 
and I went to 127, no, 107 completions and 150 something deaths. <laughs> like, <laughs> like just completely only dying. Jesus. And then, and then by towards the end of it though, like I pretty much was able to always read chat at no matter what point of uh, gauntlet. And I could like, you know, redemption, ticket, whatever you needed to do with the ease. So I, I know it'll happen with Bandos as well. But what happens to me is I'll be like in cycle and I'll start reading like chat and then he'll hit me on the mate and I won't really realize that he's going to hit me on the mage uh, range tick now and I'll just like get chongled in the face or I'll lose my rhythm because I'm like reading something or replying to something and I'll just be off rhythm for the ticks and then everything will just hit me and then I'll panic and you know what I mean? So I think for me, I, I probably just need to send a lot more bandos to be able to do that on stream, but one of the most fun things about learning Bandos was at the end of the kill when you do like the one tick piety into the three minions. Like learning that rhythm, I had to bank stand and learn that shit because there's no way you can just like, it's so tough to learn it in the moment, especially yeah. when you're like low HP at the end of a kill. But that is the most addicting thing ever. And it's just muscle memory now. It's just like, I know exactly when to do it with, with whatever with however like the minions are lined up on it on like any tick i can like basically do it the thing that was really tough that re so sarah doman is a completely different story when you're doing the two tick blowpipe with three five tick minions i remember watching Ladius do that on stream like probably a year and a half ago that was the coolest fucking thing i'd ever seen that is actually really strange it's so addicting too i'm still not proficient at it but during my uh, 50 kill Sarah trip um, for th that Grandmaster task, I was just like, you know what? This is a good time to just fuck around with that and try to like learn it. That was mm -hmm. that is fucking addicting. It is so much fun. Th those th those are the best things about doing those kills or like the minions afterward. Not just camping piety. And I have a question for you: Would yeah. it just be like two cycles then you, that you'd be on the other one, cycle A or cycle B? That you just endlessly repeat, you go A B A B. Do you know what I mean in the five ticks? Does uh, that make any sense or no? Uh, so get, it just depends saying. how the minions are lined up because, like, I would, I would. It's purposely... unique every time, but like once you figure out like what the cycle is, it's just repeating the same cycle A B A B. Right? Yeah, yeah, it would just be yeah. like repeating it, but um, yeah. it's fucking weird. And uh, but as soon as you kind of grasp it, so it, initially it's like, dude, I don't even fucking know what's going on. Like your brain can't even fathom what's going on. <laughs> I remember watching yeah. Laddie soon. I'm like, damn, he makes it look so easy. And then I was like, dude, I don't know what the hell's going on. Like, are is my rigor even on during like the tick? My blowpipes attacking? Like, it was just so much shit going on. But then as soon as you grasp it, it's like, okay, everything's clicking. And same thing with tick eating. As soon as you yeah. like initially grasp it, it's like, okay, everything's coming in. And it, that is addicting. I really wish there was some sort of boss where that would really apply. Where there's like just too many, there's like other cycles going on like at once. But you don't. One really of the get most satisfying much. things that I've done in this game definitely is Bando's tick eating. It, yeah, I, I remember for me for a while it was like first learning how to Calvino flick, like like using just the prayer book and not like your orb to flick different offensives and different uh, defensives at yeah. the same time. Um, but I don't know what there's just something so satisfying. Like let's say Bando's ranges you three times in a row and you're sitting one HP. And you just, I don't know, you like, ah, there's something so satisfying about it. You should really try the Sarah. In fact, you should go to a bank and try to imagine that there's what three minions like? attacking you and trying to pray rigor as well on like every other tick. You know, I still don't have rigor on this account. <laughs> oh, that sucks because you're going to learn this stupid muscle memory with eagle eye and then you have to fucking adjust. Yeah, I don't know. I found it like pretty easy just from... My favorite flick in the game. This is a really weird one. It's per, it's like any of the protection prayers, but then also flicking, ultimate strength and incredible reflexes. Yeah, that's so just obnoxious. <laughs> that is it, obnoxious. It, I mean, you can probably tell why I have carpal tunnel, but like, yeah, <laughs> that shit is fun as fuck. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure I'd enjoy the Sarah one, and I'd fuck it up a shit ton before. Oh, I it's it. so hard to grasp. It's like you're gonna literally have thoughts like, "I'll never get this. I will never understand this." And then all of a yeah. sudden you understand it and you're like, what the hell? It's like riding a fucking bike. As soon as you get it, though, it's like, okay, now I get it. 
flicking the bandos minions like with guffins and then switching to like whatever your four tick weapon is is fucking that's hard uh yeah doing the doing the four tick piety with the minions yeah you're on you're on like full five ticks so like everything's the same the same then when you full heal and you need to just kill everything it's like nothing's the same like you're just one tick behind like you're you're moving like one tick down cycle with your yeah no that's what's addicting about it that's like the fun yeah and showing that, like, showcasing, that's really fun, too. I wish it was long. I wish the minions had more health. <laughs> and, like, I don't know. One thing so that fun. I don't like about Bandos, so I have, I get major anxiety. Not during a Bandos kill, but after Bandos dies, <laughs> that I have to kill everything on time. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, like, the, the reason why is because I'll just get giga distracted. And, yep. like, I don't know, like, maybe I'll start replying to someone or, like, doing something else on the side. And then, like, I'm finishing off the range minion. I still have to pick up all the bones, okay? I still have to hit the altar or whatever. And Bandos is there already spawning. And, like, yeah. I look at my, like, rune light timer. It's, like, red. And I'm like, oh, shit. I got to figure out. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I get a lot of anxiety post-kill for you sure. Know, you know what's been cool about doing some Infernos lately? I've been – I've spent, like, nine fucking thousand Slayer points on skipping exclusively for Inferno tasks been so good but i'm like this is so incredibly wasteful like i'm literally just wasting really good tasks just to fucking get an inferno task because i've just been so like into it uh but you know then again why do you have slayer points if you're not going to just fucking splurge on them once in a while anyway uh for sure i need to get a lot of slayer points i need to probably do wildy slayer yeah now that's a really good way to get points but i was doing inferno and now i'm getting down the like the praying rigor just once what? every five ticks with the uh like two two uh attacking mobs like at four ticks and stuff and getting yeah. down that like one tick thing and i'm getting really confident and just comfortable with it that yeah. shit that i would watch streamers do and i'm like fuck that i'm gonna mess that up so i need to i need to do inferno at some point as well i kept promising i'd do an rcp kit, are you then I got anxious about it and then Am I anxious about yeah. doing it? I'm not anxious about doing it. I'm anxious about doing it on stream. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's. Are like, you not anxious about no... doing it in general though? Because no, I feel like, dude. Honestly, I feel like if it were off stream, I would love hitting my head against a brick wall and learning. That's the best time you can have in this game, learning new content. But there's something about my inner ego or my inner like whatever the fuck that I don't want to learn on stream. Because I, you know what happened? Okay, you know what was pissing me off while I was like learning Zami or something. I'd be learning Zami. I'd be like doing the flicks or whatever. I'd fuck up, right? I'm not perfect, especially like I still fuck up a lot because I don't have it down, but mm-hmm. like I'm competent. But it's so fucking annoying when you're sitting on stream, you're flicking Zami, you look over at your chat, and there's just this one fucking random motherfucker who's just like, hey, dude, why don't you use the BOFA method? They're like, why don't you suck my nuts and like let dude. me do what I want to do yeah. in the game? Like, yeah. it's just so fucking annoying. It's like, and when you die, it's like Pepe laugh, you know? Yeah. Just use yeah. BOFA and shit. Like, it's fine from people, you know? But when it's just like a complete random for some reason, yeah. it just gets on my nerves so much. And it's like you're trying to enjoy something and learn something. And enjoyment actually comes from learning, like you just said. And, like, mm-hmm. just doing the fucking BOFA method the whole time is just, like, boring. Yeah. It's so and boring. So the reason why I, I'm anxious about Inferno for my iron on stream is just because I'm going to have to relearn it, right? I promised an RCB, and then I got Carpal Tunnel, and that got delayed. But I also think, like, since all my friends are cape sellers, people probably expect me to be, like, half decent at Inferno or something. It's like, dude, I haven't done Inferno for, like, three years now, two yeah. years or whatever, however no, long it's I w- been. I, was I am sh- gonna be. I, I was shit at it when I but get it, and you, I'm gonna be even worse now. You, you know what I mean? Like the thing is, like you get it down so quick. Like just get like a couple capes, and then it's like okay, now I. It doesn't take yeah. long. I so I kept thinking to myself because I had only done like four capes or something. And the last time I did one was like two years ago. I'm like, this is gonna be fucking awful. And then I just mm-hmm. did like two completions. I'm like, okay, I feel very comfortable now doing this. It still gives me a little bit of anxiety, mm-hmm. but like now I just go in. I'm like, oh, this chill you know what it is it's I just, like i i might not necessarily fully care about someone judging me but it just gets tiresome when you're brick walling at something because every like i'm definitely gonna brick wall at some point during it i don't know what it's gonna be but i definitely am are and you comfortable with triple be, jads dude triple jads is slow motion okay good what so the thing with triple jads is 
like when you first saw them, you're like, oh my god, this I shit's know. so fast. There's no con- conceivable, fathomable way that I'll ever be able to do something like this consistently and constantly. Yeah. And then you do six jads, and you look back, and you're like, damn, that shit is slow motion. <laughs> yeah. These jads have like, I could eat a full dinner in between. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm not worried about that at all. I think like, I don't know what I'm gonna brick wall on actually, considering I have the bofa. I suppose that is probably adding a bit of anxiety for me because now that I have the Bofa, there's like literally no excuse for me to brick wall. But when I was just going to do the RCB cape, at least if I brick wall, I had an excuse. You know what I mean? So now I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, listen. I feel like. Go ahead. You were saying something about like uh, how you get annoyed with certain Twitch chat. And I just I figured I might as well bring up this Twitch or this, uh, this Twitter topic right now. So uh-huh. Thighhead says. What's one of your favorite things about Twitch chat? And then also biggest pet peeve. So I want to ask you first, second, and then you, Lopsy. Uh, so my favorite thing about Twitch chat is just when, I don't know, when you're doing something and chat's like hype and you're hype and you're just having a good time. Or like if you want to riff about something and you can genuinely get someone's opinion and like have a decent discussion, even if it's like completely like against what you believe or what you think. I just think that the element of interaction in a live medium is just so much fun. Like, I love streaming for that aspect, right? Yep. I love streaming when Twitch chat is pogging off. Uh, what's my biggest pet peeve of Twitch chat? I probably kind of think I just listed it. Um, People backseating? What, yeah, not necessarily. Like, look, I don't mind getting backseated by... Like, I don't a actually gamer. genuinely care by for the most part. Like, if someone's backseating... Yeah, I don't care either. It, it's just like, okay, It's just cool. kind of like I ignore you yeah. unless you <laughs> unless I, like, know of you and, yeah. you know, trust your opinion. Uh, I just think for, for me, it gets annoying when I'm, like, actually struggling and what you're saying is so basic and, like... Like, you've already <laughs> heard it a million times. You know, like some, yeah, you know, some things just gonna, like, bother you when you're already annoyed... It's more of that rather than that as a sole instance in and of itself, sole action bothering me. It's just that I'm highly irritable right now. So anything I read that could be mildly irritable is just going to feel that way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like versus you not being irritated or annoyed, you're, you're going to be able to ignore it. Yeah. So yeah. Um, one of the best things to see Twitch chat doing um, is just spamming a bunch of emotes while you're playing a song. Yeah, that, that's nice. That, that's a satisfying feeling. Okay, what about you, Lopsy? Um, best thing about Twitch chat. Best thing about Twitch chat is chat itself. Um, I'm like completely. I'm like a. I'm not one of those like you know third eye hippies, but um, I'm like really about energy. So like, when I. So you really like, like it when everyone spams the Seder, uh channel point reward, right? That's what yeah, you like. Well, okay, yeah. <laughs> I hate it here. Um. <laughs> Not, not, not just that, but um, I'm just about like chat being involved with what I'm doing, right? Or, or just being involved in any type of conversation. It just the reason I like like going live is that there's an energy. I'm, I'm like very, and when I say energy orientated, I don't mean like, like, I don't even know what I mean by that. I, I just I think, mean there's I like energy given, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's like there's energy given and I, I'm like capitalizing on like, oh, you're, you're interested in what's going on or you have something to say. Well, I want to like give you more things to say or get you more interested by, yeah. you know, acting like a fool or making a joke, cracking a joke at that, you know, getting introspective, whatever the case may be. I just think that like it's it's so big for like me personally that like there's a shared like interest in in like i shouldn't even say like topics but a shared interest in like the vibe so i hate the word the vibe but yeah so i want to add on to that and ask you like there is definitely a difference and like i'm asking both of you i guess or kind of saying this to both of you but there's definitely a difference when it's like low energy and it just feels like you can't like regain that momentum during the stream and then there's times where it's like you can do no fucking wrong and like the chat can do no wrong and it's just like this constant energy building and it's like you never want it to die. But then as soon as One you of the like worst things to go through while yeah. you're streaming is feeling that like there's no energy in yeah, me or it's my chat. Horrible. It's just, and you it's just like, wanna end. Honestly, you ch- <laughs> exactly like I'm just ending this, now. Make up some yeah, fucking yeah. excuse, like I'm I'm out. 
can't do it. I was I, I was actually gonna put that as like my biggest pet peeve. Sekon literally mentioned it on stream the other day. Um, he was trying to get Garchic phone going. Which have you played that, Save? What is? Oh no, I Go. haven't. He keeps playing okay. it. I don't know what okay. it. Side when it's basically. Is dead? Oh, when Twitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, basically. But Garchic phone is just like um. You should watch Whale when he plays it, because Whale gets like some some of his like chat in there, and it's just really funny. It's basically like uh, the game Telephone, but with pictures. So like somebody puts a sentence, right? Like um, the last one I put was um, uh, the Last Supper, but it's all uh, Bloods. Um, so like you know they draw like gang members around a table breaking bread. Yeah. And then yeah. somebody interprets that and says, um, like the Shazian at their giant fucking table or something like that. Right. And then it gets turned into something else and something else. And then by the end, it's just a, just something completely different. And it's always like a good laugh. Yeah. Um, so it's basically that. And, and like, I resonated with sec on a level so much so that I didn't chat in his chat the entire night after, because he said, you know, I'd play Gartic phone, but, um, chat's fucking dead. And there's nothing like more unenjoyable than like, when chat is dead so yeah. i wasn't going to contribute to chat because then i would ex be expected to like stay there you know so, so <laughs> yeah no that was definitely yeah you gotta you gotta you gotta help my dead stream dude <laughs> no that is yeah. that is really bad and uh that's why i kind of like i know how it is to be like i don't know just to like start out streaming like starting out streaming the cool thing about starting out streaming is like any growth is growth so like you don't yep. know any better so it's just like mm -hmm. you know you gain from two viewers to three and it's like oh great you know but there's definitely like so many moments back then where it's just zero energy and i'm like holy shit like you got to fucking create out of thin air that's when like you're true <laughs> that's when like man i'm gonna be honest you're like, go ahead. i know i'm interrupting but yeah. i never really experienced that like when i started streaming i just felt like everyone was always just already there do you know what i mean like i never really experienced that like i should also preface this and say there was like a year of streaming where i'd stream like once every couple days well like once every couple weeks and like at that point obviously no but like i remember when i first started like you know what i'll give this a try like to try and do it every day it was because i was like watching you and you told me to kind of yeah and i i think it was just because of like i don't know being a part of your community a lot of people who watched you just automatically came over to me yeah. And so I never really had to experience that lull period. It's been more so now, though, since I've, like, taken a break and tried to come back. There's been, like, random times. I still don't really feel it. It's just very, yeah. Yeah. You know, no, so it's just, funny. it's just, it's like the comparison as well. It's like, yeah. oh, man, like, yesterday was so much better. And, like, I still get that stuff. Like, I'm very blessed to have, like, a pretty healthy, like, viewer average when i go live like anytime but i mm -hmm. still get that no energy viewers i have so many lurkers and so it's like it's like the hedonic treadmill right like you get used to no matter what circumstances exactly. you had in the past or what you were in yep. like it only matters what you've recently gone through exactly like you can be raised dirt poor right become a trillionaire and then become a billionaire you would <laughs> fucking hate it you would hate <laughs> being a billionaire because you've been a trillionaire you're yeah. like well life you know like you, you it's the hedonic treadmill yep. just the way it is it's yeah. so weird how that works yeah i mean like you, you're you're you could be a millionaire right like i mean hun like you know you could have a hundred million dollars to your name but if you had a billion before that you would hate it oh yeah yeah so self-conscious <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's so funny how you talk about like the lull period like that because um i i felt like i was trying to produce like the best content then like i was always upgrading my stream i was always getting something to like uh, make it easier to transition or i'd i'd spend the time to go get sound bites so like when something funny happened i could fucking play a little sound clip and shit so like i was spending so much time off stream for my stream i heard rendy talk about this yeah no rendy, rendy was like last rendy week. was spending so much time off stream for his on stream and then didn't even enjoy it and that's exactly what happened to me and I was put, I was putting so I was trying so hard to like have a, a tractable stream, and then I'd look at my analyst. I hate checking my view count. That's also one of my biggest pet peeves. Is like I have a lot of IRL friends that like n knew when I streamed like s like speed running back in the day, and I had like ten to you know fifty viewers then, and like they were like every time they'd come in then, and e even when they come in now, dang bro, you got forty five viewers. That's sick, dude. I remember when you had six viewers. It's like. 
Like, Thanks, shut man. the fuck up. <laughs> I get it. I, yeah. I can tell there's more people here. More people are talking. And it's like, I love my boys and all, but like, just read the vibe after the first time. Don't keep doing that I shit know. every time you enter my fucking stream. Like, yeah. Now you oh, gotta literally man. like pull them aside, Mike. Can you please stop doing that? Yeah, yeah. I I have a like like IRL friends that are just not aware of like how like because they don't interact with. And you stream, can't like... fully know unless you're a streamer. Trust me. Like yeah. I don't feel like I could yeah. have ever known what the effect is before I stream because I thought that was honestly like a cool thing to tell somebody. Like, hey, like you're killing it, man yeah but deep down like there's so much more that's going through the streamer's mind it's like bro like shut the fuck up yeah the only time i ever looked at my view count is when i was at like the peak of um of like my inferno like rcb and like the, the like one of the craziest nights ever was like canadian rs Hayes. he hosted me for like 40 viewers and like when i checked like uh right before i went into zuck i had 730 viewers Jesus. and i was just like what the fuck is happening and like it was like way late at night and uh curtis popped in the stream and he just i think curtis's only message in my chat is just pog champ because like i was like the only person on the section with like basically the, like the only top person on the section so like for that brief hour i was yeah. top in the room it was just like like the stars aligned and stuff it was just like oh my god this is fucking sick like th this is awesome yep. and then like after this is why i hated looking at my view count though because then after that i was like oh man i want to check my view count so bad i want to check it i and then i check it and it's like i have 30 viewers what 30 i had 700 yesterday like yeah. what's happening but it's just like the the it wanes and it beckons to a degree that like like especially when you're not one of those figures like even like will will blew up this like last year i think it was like a little bit of uh Bodhi you know talking more highly about him and then like a bunch of other streamers you know following suit like oh yeah let me give him a chance like, even Bodie likes him and then it was like all of a sudden now he's like every night he goes live i look at i'm i'm looking at my sidebar he's got uh oh 600 viewers five seconds later 1.2k 1.3k like that's yep. crazy yeah like considering like when he was like 40 viewer andy yep he was like the same as he is now i except now he's he's got that like uh I shouldn't say arrogant, but he's gotten that smart ass like mouth with with like the the annoying viewers, which he has a fuck ton of annoying. I couldn't imagine having a stream that Old big. Will that's chat like, Pepe hands. Yeah, literally. Th that's the thing about any streamers. Like, what what are you gonna do? Just be the fucking same person you were at three viewers. Like, you're no, gonna not, have yeah. this really, natural sense really of confidence well. and just yeah. you know a, probably a little bit of arrogance. Every streamer gets oh, it 100%. when you get a little bit, but uh. No, and that's what's crazy is like, and that's also like kind of the, that's the luck aspect as well. Like thinking of Will like as kind of the same streamer, but he didn't get like those, yeah, yeah. other streamers to like acknowledge him and stuff like that. I mean, Will was gonna kill it regardless. He's just a really like, a people like really gravitate toward like his energy and just the way he is and stuff. So, but there is just also that element of luck. I also think it's like great that he's just as weird as his chat. So it's like, it's, you know, that's, that helps. Yeah. But th this is the weird Yo, thing. Shout out to Hello Snoopy, you know? <laughs> and honestly, legitimately shout out Snoopy. He's yeah. one of the best Twitch chatters out there. Yeah, no. So uh, I guess, I guess maybe I should explain that a bit more. Uh, Snoopy's just like someone who's in Will's chat. He's like a VIP in there and everyone just, he, he types very broken, but like very strange English. <laughs> and he says very funny and odd and interesting things, I suppose. And that's just kind of who he is. And then like he's set up, he's actually done a couple streams. And it's just like him doing herbivore or something. Herbivore, I should say, sorry. And like he has like a bunch of like memes on screen. And it's just very different. And very, I don't know. Great guy. Cool guy. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know Shut much up. about him. I've heard of him. Yeah, he's interesting. That's the best way I can. Yeah, he's unique. Very, he's very interesting yeah. fellow. You know what's uh, weird is like you will see these streamers, and you're like, you're gonna blow up. You're gonna blow up. Like you know, you'll see like somebody that's just starting out streaming. You're like, damn, I should almost like invest. <laughs> you know, like invest now because they're gonna fucking blow up. <laughs> Stonks. Like, yeah. yeah. But uh, it's really weird how that works because some of the people you would really think are going to explode like don't. 
and then some of the people that you don't really expect to get huge like do get huge it's like i i yeah. think like if someone genuinely wants something they'll obtain it though so like if if anyone ever really want i don't know like maybe i don't you can know that's them. tough to to confirm it's tough with this industry for yeah. sure yeah because like, i think you would... though if you were able to put on a consistent good show right every single day and you were committed to it eventually it would happen to you that is true I, and that there's a there is a characteristic about the streamer though like you have to not be a fucking asshole like there's just genuinely people that are just not fucking fit for streaming because they can't they like they take themselves too seriously like they so don't like, want to be memed or anything will is a great example of someone who i feel like regardless of whatever right he was kind of bound to blow up and but DC. there is there is a key element in that and that is the fucking consistency live every night it's like yeah he, there is yeah. such a big thing to say about that and it's really tough it's way tougher than like yeah. oh yeah can, it's so hard it, it's so hard to continue I, that grind i'm gonna knock at will right now because um <laughs> we all memed on him like early chat days because he was like a social media manager but like even with the the you know quote unquote J Omega little B that he had, it's still hard to fucking go live every night. Yeah. Even like working part time. Like when when I work part time and I tried to stream, it was like I my motive my killer was like there's like no motivation for me to I think I was thinking of it like as a job rather than it being like a hobby. Like I think of it now as just like a pure hobby. And it sucks I have to like give up one of my hobbies. Um, but I think it's for the better. Like the comeback will be better than the regression is now kind of thing. So like when I get that time back, you know, in the summer or whenever I, I find time, it, it should be more fun for me even then. Um, I just, yeah, like it's so hard to just be consistent because a lot of people talk to me like, dude, like your stream's great. You're going to blow up, like just keep going live. And then like the keep going live was like, do I want that? Like, yeah, it would be cool. I just don't want to make this a job. And and there you know, is like no guarantee things. either. It's people yeah, saying yeah. it. And so it's like, damn, like, you know, you got to. And there is something to say about it because if you've grown to a certain, like, for example, if somebody's come from two viewer average to 40, like the fact that you've already grown that much is kind of already uh, pretty much proof that you could grow even larger. I mean, mm -hmm. what what's to, what's stopping you at just forty if you've already gained that much? So it's like there is that little bit of like hope and stuff, but um, yeah, no, oh, that yeah. consistency <laughs> consistency thing is huge, especially when you see a plateau, which is like inevitable. Yeah. Yeah. It's like that's the thing that's really discouraging—a plateau or a slight decline. You're like, fuck. But that's just how it goes. I suppose we've already answered one of these uh, Twitter questions. Then, what motivates you to hit the go live button? Oh yeah, row. Kind of um yeah what motivates you to hit the go live button loppy well i think i already said like chat for me like literally just like and i by no means do i have a big stream like if i check my averages on the last like 10 stream it's probably like 20 viewers or something because i only i only really look at those emails at the end i i try not to ever check my um my viewers while i'm live because it just puts a different attitude on me like oh there's yeah. less people here now i'm like in a bad mood or like or there's more people here. It's like I gotta say say something or do something to get people to stick around more. But like I want to say like my average is like 20 to 30. So like at the peak of my you know on the chart I have 50 viewers. On the low end at the like you know the first hour I have 15 viewers. So it's like there's like a medium of like 20. But the same people sh that show up every day and like it's crazy when like like Ian Ian Chase Van is this dude's name fucking been in my chat for like a month and a half because Krylax rated me one time and he is he is the first person or second person in my chat every time after I've gone live after that raid that's crazy to me that that like I have streamed like not consistently but I've been on Twitch for like seven years I've streamed RuneScape for like three years now with like a, a nine month break in between like the first year and the then the like during the second year like a nine month break and like it's just crazy that after streaming for like pretty much i want to say like 13 months quote unquote consistently you know working full time still uh it's not very easy um but that somebody can just still find your stream and be like oh dude i want to be for every stream i want to be that first guy or like the second guy as soon as that live notification hits i'm there 
that's crazy to me. Yeah. I, I want to just add before I get to sec on just the motivation to go live for me at least is, uh, well, initially it was almost like a necessity because I had taken like a semester off of school. Like I was planning on going to school, but then I decided to start streaming and there was a lot of pressure on me to like <laughs> at least make something of it while I had all this time off. Mm -hmm. And so there was just this like, okay, I am going to just fucking grind this out. But nowadays it's it's a it's a bad thing but it's always kind of how i've been for like the past year i'd say is i almost have like this energy when i wake up and if the energy is not like at a certain level i like don't want to go live because i feel like it's not going to be a quality stream which is like a bad thing but that's just like being transparent is like if i wake up and i'm feeling like at a certain level i'm like okay like i i feel like good enough and enough energy to provide like a good like six hour stream or something can i add on that real quick go for it when i had like those low energies like i just worked fucking eight hours or i just worked 12 hours i'm fucking exhausted i would still go live because i in like the back of my mind i just kept thinking like chat's just gonna give me that energy and that's exactly what happened like every time i went live after a 12 hour shift it was like i hadn't like i had just woken up from a slumber because i I don't know. I'm, I feed off of like good energy like that. And yeah. Just... No, it's tough. And it's tough to like recognize that I think for me, mm -hmm. cause I, that used to happen. I would just go live regardless of how I felt. Yeah. Just like go. It's... And then, you know, you get that energy boost, but, uh, well, it's like impossible to gauge what your chat is going to be like and exactly. how much energy you're going to get from them. So it's like, it's like that weird. Do I don't I, mm -hmm. Uh, for me, in regards to hitting the live button, I think like, for the most part, if I have the time, I probably would just go live. The large deterrent, though, I think I'm gonna answer this question a bit differently, is just, uh, if I'm like feeling pretty depressed and it comes in waves, then I just will go live less. Just generally speaking, so yeah. That's pretty much just what it is for me. The other I've thing taken, that's uh, sorry, go ahead. No, sorry, I was just gonna just like one little interjection was like sometimes if you just have like one thing going on in the day just like deters me from going live it's like oh i have a slight intermission i might as well just not even go live if it's not going to be over like three or four hours but mm -hmm. i like no no you can continue oh no i like no. where you're it's um 42 ass thoughts on bpd do you guys know much about borderline i don't know what the hell um... that is what does he even say? Borderline Bi person. Bi oh, okay, okay. No, no. Borderline, borderline per personality. Yeah, no, the reason why mean? he asked this is actually. No, I don't. I, I still don't know what that means, even though you spelt yeah. out the acronym. Yeah. So uh, the reason why he asked this, and I'll explain what it is as well, is mostly just a subset of a meme. Uh, borderline is something my ex had, and it's actually quite difficult for any person when dealing with someone who has borderline, and also for the individual that may have borderline. Uh, what it essentially is, is just like this large, how do I explain it? It's like they're, one example of what they may do is they may like inflate someone to the degree of like making them a deity in their eyes. They'll be like, oh my God, I love you. You're the best thing, blah, 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 etc. Like they'll infatuate them to a certain degree. And they'll also like devalue them randomly. They'll be like, oh, you're the devil. You're the worst thing that's ever happened, blah, blah, blah. And it's like a condition where someone has because they've gone through a lot of trauma in their life that they kind of develop develop these traits or personalities or just things about their character that is quite detrimental to deal with or like for for be it the person themselves or like anyone who like knows them because they go through intense it's like the int they they experience like things very intensely almost um they they have like this large generally speaking large of they want to avoid abandonment at all costs um I mean, some other more grim and dark things is that, generally speaking, uh, they have suicidal tendencies and stuff like that. So uh, the reason why he brings this up, though, as a meme is just because uh, <laughs> we were, like, talking about me possibly having ADHD or whatnot. They're like, it's like, did you know that lately 
uh, by modern science, like, like the modern belief is that a lot of ADHD symptoms are like able to be ma like a lot of people who have ADHD actually just have borderline. I was like, just stop this right now. Like I legit know I don't have borderline. So every time he comes into my stream, he tries to like make a joke about me being borderline. So that's the only reason he brings it up. Okay. But yeah, no, I've been in uh, a relationship for five years or was in a relationship with someone for five, four years who had borderline. That is definitely one of the toughest things uh, yeah, to deal with. Sounds. As... So it's like, yeah, no, yeah. there were, there were a lot of highs and there were a lot of lows. And I was actually talking to my like therapist recently about this. Um, well, not necessarily directly about it, but I kind of suppose like it came up. Like I have this, I have this like God given natural ability to just find people who are similar. So like, because of my depravity in the sense of like my kinks or like the sexually, just how I am. I really find myself gravitating towards people who like, you know, have gone through things in their life because I find it more accessible or like, I find it easier to, for us to gain that relatability in a way, in the sense that like, it kind of builds in to, like, I've always said this for, for people who just generally like myself included, who've gone through some trauma are more likely to just to be kinky as fuck. So. I think it's interesting that I normally encounter these people a, a lot as well. Interesting. Yeah, and then his next so thing is, I I, I want to I want to just okay. quickly say something about that. So, do you think like that's an addicting relationship to be in? Do you think it's a uh, the fact that she had BPD? Yeah, for sure. 100%, it's like it's like an addiction 10, almost. Do you think like yeah, a normal so healthy relationship would be like dull? Um, so this is a question my therapist actually posed to me, right? And I do feel like the monotony of a normal relationship would get old, but in the end, like just the complete drama that I face as someone who is higher functioning in that sense and not necessarily, um, so I'm going to boil it down to this with, with the, the moments of intensity that you feel in that relationship and when it's good, it's fucking amazing, right? But when it's bad, it is dreadful. And there's something about like that aspect of constantly being kept in this like very like explosive state of like existence or of mind that almost it's like I don't want to say because I don't want to paint a negative view of anyone who does have borderline, but I would say that it, it does cause a lot of chaos internally for you. But there are, again, it's enjoyable at the same time, but it's also very chaotic and detrimental to your being and it can like damage you in many ways, right? Yeah. So um, I think just like, I don't want to, I don't know. I don't know how much I can delve into this. I would have no issue saying it personally, but I just know like for me, largely a relationship involves a lot about a larger aspect of a relationship is my sex life. So I feel like in that regard, like having that sense of depravity with someone who is like that generally just plays really well for me. So that's, I've always been wondering, like, you know, generally speaking, m most of the people that I've been in a relationship with or had like done, had like a loose sexual relationship with them or anyway, have kind of always fit that same archetype of, you know, having some trauma in their life. So it'd be interesting, I, I, I suppose, for me to be in a less chaotic relationship. Because, you know, I, I grew up in a very chaotic environment and, and household, so it's almost comfortable to me as well. So, so so does that personality only come from, like, a PTSD, like a, you know, a traumatic a, thing like that, that happened to you? Well, see, that's the interesting thing, right? Like, psychologists, um, psychiatrists, sorry, don't care about what causes something. They only care about why you are that way. So most psychiatrists, the ones who are doing the diagnosing, um, Again, this is from my understanding. I'm not knowledgeable in this area to the degree of having certification or, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, from my knowledge that they don't really care about what caused you to be a certain way. They only care about what you are and how they can treat it. A psychologist might be more interested in figuring out why you were that way. Uh, they also don't prescribe you medication and stuff. That's more psychiatrists. But um, is there other ways to develop it? I think, like, the current standing theory is that it's more nurture, less nature. But again, it's not really known. Interesting. So, yeah, it, it honestly, like all this stuff really does genuinely fascinate me. Uh, one thing that I am truly like always been into is like this concept of like differing, different beings being certain ways and like 
classifying people as like ADHD or like, I don't know why that's always just been fascinating to me just from a medical standpoint. And I've also, I've, I've always really loved the idea of augmenting your own being or your own person through like, you know, be it performance en enhancing drugs or whatever. I've never actually taken any like peds, I think, but just like the changes <laughs> that you can enact Jesus within your Christ. body. Well, like, you know, like you could argue that a ped is just protein. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it, it, yeah, like having <laughs> yeah. something that's basic, like creatine yeah. is kind of a pad, right? Like it, it, it increases the amount of ATP available to your muscles to be able to pump out. Like basically, it just gives your body, you hold on to more water, your muscles can naturally expend more ATP because I think it creates a larger reserve. So that's just energy that your cells have to be able to do more sets in a rep. Yeah. I mean, sorry, reps in a set. <laughs> but so you can get like more reps out of a set that you normally wouldn't be able to. But I don't think that's a banned substance by, by, by any regards. So, interesting. Okay, what was the next thing you wanted? Do to... you agree that all men comfortable in their sexuality should know their own body bodies? E e i e, sorry, i e a fingy. What's that? A lot a of you want to take this one? What's a fingy? <laughs> okay, so there's this. I'll I'll explain the meme, and then you can take it from here. All right, if you want to. So. Every time 42 comes into my chat, he's always preaching the good word of a fingy, okay? He wants all men to play with their booty holes. Okay, so that's what a fingy is? Or... Yeah, like putting a fingy and playing with your prostate. Putting a fingy up there. So That's what he meant by that. Jesus Christ, okay. Well, now I know what that Loppy, is. Loppy, do you want to take it away? Or no? Um, You know, man, I mentioned on the last cast, I said, have you ever gotten your ass eaten, right? Uh -huh. As a man. And you just can't knock shit like that till you try it. Yeah, no, for sure. It's like, have you seen that meme that's like, um, <laughs> fuck, I can't even remember what the image is, but it's like the dude with the smirk. And it's like when God made being gay against, you know, like the Ten Commandments, but also put the male G spot back there like that shit had me fucking <laughs> dying because it literally is like the male G spot, like the the equivalent. I shouldn't say the equivalent because it's not like you have like the similar orgasm, uh, mm -hmm. but it's like it's like that um, the feel good spot for the male. Yeah. So for me, not like your I, dick. I think I've been. <laughs> well, you have two, just okay, like a, okay, a woman okay. has two. Okay. Yeah. Continue. So, um, I've been talking to Loppy about this actually, and I've been like, I've never really played with my booty hole, right? <laughs> <laughs> I never expected to be talking about this on the couch. <laughs> like, I've been interested in the aspect of it. Right? Somebody's gonna like... be scrolling through this fucking save a cast and just randomly <laughs> get. <to the> <laughs> That's that the first thing you listen I think to. This is, I think this is gonna be the best part about the save a cast. If I'm gonna be honest, you could just probably clip this and you know just ship this whole thing. That's it. Um, Continue. Yeah, no. <laughs> I've been like interested in the aspect about playing with my booty hole, I suppose. But again, the deterrent is not even like, oh my god, you're not supposed to do that, man. I eat ass. I love eating ass. Shout out to eating ass, dude. I get freaky with it. I am the most depraved, like one of the most depraved. Like I get it, right? For me, it's just I don't know if I want to invest all that time because, like, look, you're jerking off. It's much more. It's it's less of a time commitment than it is to play with your booty hole because that that involves. I'm not saying that jerking off isn't like a sanitary hazard. But it's much less so, okay? Yeah. It, much like less so when playing with your process. Into it, you know, like if you're going to have a woman do that with you, you know, rather than like a self, self-exploratory, I think is very important, right? Yeah. Um, in terms of like knowing what you want sexually in a relationship, I think is very important. Um, But like there's like prep work that goes into, you know, the, uh, the thingy that like, you just don't have to do when you just want to jerk off. Yeah. So, um, and by that I mean, so you're like, saying like an enema beforehand. Yeah, 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 exactly. You need to you need to either clean yourself out or like, like freshly shower and just scrub yeah, that. Basi shit. Yeah, basically, <laughs> yeah. Okay. And like, yeah, and then there's also like the expensive part of it is like, like for instance, like my ex wanted a toy to be involved so that like we could have sex while there was like both of us were getting stimulated kind of thing. Yeah. So it's like, so it's like that type of stuff where like uh -huh. now there's an expense into it. Whereas I could just go jerk off, dude, or I could just go buy a condom and that's like much, much cheaper than some like 
probe, if you will. Mm -hmm. Some like massage or something. Yeah. Rather. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, I suppose not to get too. F yeah. Well, I guess we're already here. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know. For the expense part about me, I've always been in a relationship that I feel like, I guess, you're, I guess you're just touching to the fact that, you know, healthy, re like you were mentioning relationships involve a lot of sexual exploring also mm -hmm. like for your own self. I've always been one to bring a lot of shit to the bedroom, like toys and all that. So from an expense department, I, it is actually like an added cost though, for sure. That is, cause I mean, like we were, we were, we were dishing out carts to each other about what we were going to order for sex toys like not too long ago. <laughs> and I'm going to be honest, me and Lobby were messaging each other like, yo, dude, I heard about this toy. Like, what do you, have you ever tried something like this? What are your Jesus thoughts? Christ. So, um, you know what? This naturally all very, this leads very well into this question that Yobo asked, actually. The question is for say, how does it feel being in call with two of the freakiest <laughs> blokes on the platform? And why are you aroused right now? <laughs> oh my god okay um you know what i like listening to this stuff i like listening to anything anything that's new uh -huh. to me I, I i find interest in it and uh well most things i can't say everything but um you try everything once right <laughs> yeah i try anything once like so honestly that, i honestly i've gotten to that put point. a thingy back there after this call <laughs> i'm sorry no nah, probably not <laughs> probably not <laughs> i'm gonna be honest i'm kind of like <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'll try anything once you know five gifted and i'll fucking try it off stream <laughs> no but listen um no i uh real talk i feel very honored to have both of you in, on this cast and uh you know like i don't know i feel like there's a how do i go how do i make this like i don't want to be like insensitive or anything but like I don't know. I feel like you guys, you both, could really be like huge streamers, like, and uh, I don't know. It like it like almost saddens me that like Lopsy's like taking a break from streaming and like Sakon never got to explore like his like true like fucking potential initially. Although it's still there, I think. Um, but honestly, like it's a pleasure fucking talking to both of you because I almost feel like. Like, I don't know, like, like there's still that potential there and like being able to talk to you two exclusively without any like <laughs> payment required, just like, <laughs> you know, like I got to fucking pay you guys to be on this gas, like, which is another fucking beautiful. Wait, you're not this. paying us? Another few, be you're paying me five <laughs> gifted. Um, anyway, but so uh, I guess like on a real note, it's, it's a fucking honor to have both of you on the cast and uh I don't fucking take this shit for granted being able to like be a host of a podcast and just being able to get like really interesting and funny people to be on the cast and just have good conversations. I suppose I'm going to interrupt and say, I appreciate you having this cast just in general. Cause I remember it was like, I, I, I mentioned this on the first cast, so I'm going to keep it short, but you know, this was at one point an idea and to actually have it be come to fruition and be on it. That's also really cool for sure. Yeah, that's the other thing. Like looking, I remember linking somebody from last week was like, "Oh, you have a podcast? Like, how do I how do I see your podcast?" And I linked the Spotify cast. And I just while the premiere was going on on Twitch, I just like scrolled through and I'm like, "Jesus!" Like, I've done a lot of these, and I, I sometimes I forget how many I've done. Which is it's not like that many right now. Like we're on thirty seven, but like when you actually scroll through the list and see the guests, yeah. it's like. You, you know what I love too is like there's like always the same I feel like you've had like one or two that sounded like the energy was like weird everything else is just like the energy is like the same consistency of like the interest in the other person and I, I super appreciate you even having us on I mean m me myself like I am fucking the only person that like or I shouldn't say the only person but the only reason I'm like known is like I'm a very active chatter I'm very active in like terms of donating. So it's like with like a bunch of people in the community. So it's like, I have no like reason for you to gain anything from me being on here. And it's just like the inviting the the amount of like open inviting this invitation, like the invitation is just so like warmed and welcomed. It just feels, you know, it feels like you're just here to, you know, better the, community even more it just it means a lot 
and you saying it. what you said means a fucking lot like bringing a tear to my eye because i it just sucks so bad like one of my favorite hobbies i just just gotta let go for a little while yeah. until you know shit gets more attainable yeah and i think uh like i don't know maybe taking a break like a a, ne a necessary break and stuff to work on uh your career and stuff would be like motivating coming back like you were saying earlier yeah like yeah that comeback is like really refreshing yeah no um, it's it's just great i i love this i love this time to talk and no, for sure it's it's, it's, it's almost it's also sorry go ahead i don't know i was just like the one on uh, this is the first time we've ever had two guests on but like uh, in general the one-on-one -on -one is so refreshing like imagine it was us three like hosts and we had like one guest on or something like dude we, i don't know i just feel like there'd be too much going on do you feel that yeah. way do you feel like well I don't, I don't i don't feel like it would be too much but i feel like one person wouldn't get to say their piece because you're you want to get to many topics yeah you know what i mean yeah so it almost feels like somebody's getting to, and i feel somebody's like always going to get left out i, feel, I like. feel like i'm cutting somebody off even in this call with three of us it feels like i'm cutting somebody off or somebody's not getting to say their piece because we move all of us have like the attention span of like what's <laughs> happening in the conversation and we want to say something and then like right after they're done talking it's like fuck he brought up a point i want to talk about this yeah we kind of lose what we want to talk about yeah so I, I feel like the, you know, the chemistry between us is, is well enough that um, it doesn't seem like a big issue when we don't get to touch on topics that we are like holding our tongue for. But also, I feel like it'll be different in, you know, a year when um, you're flying guests out to be on the, you know, the Sebe At cast. The studio, you know, the Sebe the, studio. This, this, yep, the studio. <laughs> and um, second, did you have anything you want to say about this? Because I, I have a question for Seder. Say about what in specific? Whatever we were just talking about. I already forgot. I think yeah, there was another on. question that second wanted to bring up on. Oh, no. I was just going to move on to a different topic. So you you go ahead. You expand, my guy. Um. Okay. Where do you see the cast in five years? Oh, shit. Like, like by, by that, I don't mean like. I don't mean Where do like, you see um, yourself in six months? Year, yeah. I, I don't mean like. I actually like, like these questions because the... I don't think about them often. But go ahead. I, not like like what do you want the cast to become or something but like how like numbers numbers wise are you hoping like because you just post this on your regular youtube it's not like you have like a separate podcast youtube channel right yeah this is on my normal youtube are you hoping like this expands your youtube into more like like rendy was saying like you want to like just anybody could come on this cast they don't have to be runescape related is that the goal do you want to have a studio like those are just like little ideas of, of of what i'm thinking so honestly i don't actually think about moving on from runescape and just, just, just it and the reason i don't think about it, it's not like that there's no like i wouldn't love that but i don't think about it because there's just so many more guests i want to get on that are based in runescape i guess mm -hmm. and it's something that i'm very passionate about still and so i remember talking to rendy and there's a lot of people kind of like getting in their later 20s and stuff that start moving on from the game, which is completely like natural and <laughs> I totally understand. But like I haven't gotten to that point yet. And I know it's like a natural thing to like eventually move on from things. Yeah. Um, And so when I was asked that question by Rendy, like, would you be willing to get on other guests? Of course. And in, in fact, some of the casts we've had, in fact, your both of your individual casts, we didn't talk much about runescape we still did obviously but it was a lot more of irl as well and i love talking about that stuff um but it would be strange like i guess the thing is like when i really think about it like who am i to ask like who not who am i to ask but who am i going to ask to be on that's not runescape related Equal. that i have any connection with you know hamlin's i, I don't <laughs> i mean yeah i mean but he is runescape related you know just the origin but then he blew the fuck up. like yeah, yeah but i'm mean, talking like, like people that have no to... that don't know about runescape you know what why don't yeah. you send a dm to shroud <laughs> shroud does have a background he in does RuneScape, have a though. runescape back yeah 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 he was splashing on chickens back when he was playing PUBG. I he remember. got 99 mage dude yeah. on on the and getting it? hella donations no, on, the, on the demon yeah he got he got 99 mage on a demon didn't he I like in the wizard's tower i thought it was on a chicken Maybe it was. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was a chicken yeah. on bridge. 
no, but so in five years, like, I don't know, like I just felt when I first started this, I love listening to fucking podcasts. I love it. In yeah. fact, I listen to a lot of podcasts off stream and stuff all the time when I go on walks and stuff as well. And the thing that was missing from the RS community is that sort of like podcast. And there were, and there still are some podcasts, but there was nothing at, like, uh, on Twitch. <sighs> No, like I like I'm talking like on YouTube as well, okay. um, but there was nothing like high enough level, almost, yeah, or yeah. just like relevant and there was. It's so hard to like quantify, I guess. But I'm trying to say like there wasn't enough Gamer content out there. Podcasts. Yeah, that was like interesting to me enough. Mm-hmm. It was too Bring casual. Back the fat cast. Bring back the fat cast, man. Yeah, that's why I love I love those like clan podcasts where there's like mm-hmm. high level clan podcasts. <laughs> like I I I used to listen to the Hexes podcast back when like Sick Nerd and like Trance Music and all these other people were on it, just because it was man. so foreign to me. Every was... time I hear Trance Music, I just think of the you know the scenario. <laughs> he is an interesting. Him. He is an interesting dude, but he has a video of him like judging the top page players like years ago like this is like 2013 or 2014 and it's like him saying uh, what was the title of the video so people probably know what i'm fucking talking about but it was just funny as hell i thought the dude was just like had a lot of like dry humor that was just really funny but we're talking uh, about the same trance music here aren't we like that one guy who started dating that other girl and like news i think her name was poison music. ivy yeah i i yeah, don't like i don't know the full story on any of that i just know he bought he like real world traded his shit bought a wedding ring and then got married or something <laughs> or an engagement Jesus. i don't know what the hell it was but i have no clue about this yeah no it would i honestly oh, don't because Lobby, i was I'll show you i was a new off stream it is fucking, okay. yeah <laughs> it is no, off stream off cast i'll send all i'm you. saying is like these were like figures in the community and when you get to when and like automology joined hexes at that time and stuff and there was just a bunch of like fucking giants on this cast on this mm-hmm. podcast that they do every uh, every two weeks and uh I don't know. I, that that was what it's like, dude. I want to listen to this shit. It doesn't even relate to me at all, but it's like interesting. And that's what a lot of podcasts are like. A lot of the time, it doesn't actually relate to anything I'm doing, but it's like, fuck, this is interesting. I think the best part about listening to any cast is just getting to know what they, as a person, are passionate about. Be it RuneScape, being anything. So I think like when I when you have a guest who's talking about IRL, um, or talking about anything really, it's just intriguing to hear. Like, I suppose, like, it's nice to have a guest who came on that you can have some sort of relatability to, uh, relate, relatability to, just because of um, them playing RuneScape and talking about their goals of the game or how they got started or something. And from that, like, once you're truly, like, I'll be honest, I don't really watch much of Foe's stuff, but after his podcast, I started watching some streams. Mm-hmm. It was really funny watch him tr- watching him trying to do Corrupted Gauntlet <laughs> because... Like, he's a hardcore, right? And, I mean, he self-proclaimed says he's obviously not the best at this game, but he, you know, he tries his best and he has a fun time doing it. And just, like, gaining that perspective on him just being an average dude playing the game, enjoying his time and, like, interacting with people and, like, watching him do Corrupted Gauntlet and, like, have to vocalize everything that he did because he, like, he had to prep Tier 3 armor and he had to, like, keep a mental tally. I don't know. It was... I feel like your cast uh, allows uh, people an opportunity to get to to know about others in the community interestingly yeah. enough you, you you know like even for me it was with foe like i never really gave any of his stuff a chance until i like listened to that podcast and watched that's him. awesome yeah, and i, I bet he would, meet... I bet he's not expecting that i'm the one that's hopefully gaining yeah. some viewers from having him on yeah i i gotta meet him at uh twitchcon 2019 and like yeah. he just seems like the most unapproachable built dude and like me and uh, my like best friend Cody, we were like just standing over having a beer, like just looking out. Like all the RuneScape people were together, and I'm like, I'm not like on stream. You'd think, oh, this dude just fucking is trying to be the center of attention everywhere. Nah, when when we were there, it was like me and him just kind of like having a conversation. Just like, damn, like look, like this is all the people that stream. Sick. <laughs> and then like paul sees us and just walks up to us like hey you guys you guys play runescape like you're here with like the runescape guys i was like uh yeah i mean like i mean me and him are just like it was just like he approached us in this like super kind 
just like he seems so unapproachable especially being like one of those giants on the platform yeah and he's just a fucking just a person just a person just you know one of those like relieving things of yeah it is yeah it is so cool the humility that he shows Bodhi shows and like i don't know exact shows there's i don't know dude shout out to humility you know mm -hmm. shout out to humility yeah that is yeah um i think i wanted to touch on music at some point during this cast um before that uh for sure yobo i think his name is has that other one okay like the question for me and you I guess read it out extends for Seder. uh how do you feel about the community actually being quote addicted end quote to rs and how important is it to find a healthy life balance between in-game and real life i could speak on this for fucking hours because um originally i started working like uh, electrical when i was like first out of high school and like i just i wanted to fucking play runescape so fuck it was like right when i started getting like into the game like watching the updates doing all that and like no doubt about it i was like helplessly addicted to every time i woke up i would fucking get on my computer before i even thought about eating breakfast or taking a piss i'd get on my computer and start afking something so i was like gaining xp so i want to know and, just real quick on that like mm -hmm. was it addiction or was it like habit or were you like genuinely like i want to fucking play this game like right now like was it it was it was a scary addiction uh because i quit my fucking job to just play runescape that's like, when I, runescape's the fucking best though like that, that initial was, like was a total addiction total like the fucking yeah. dopamine was insane <laughs> yeah. literally logging on every day just like oh numbers oh. yeah it's just like just, it's like you're in your element you're like ah, oh, dude like, I'm it was in. so good. Yeah. It was so good. That's funny. It was so good that like I couldn't even I smoked a bunch of weed and did some drugs at the time. I couldn't even compare to how those drugs made me feel. RuneScape was the drug. It was so good. And <sighs> you know what? After I found that balance, I found more appreciation for my time to like value. I talked about this on the on the last podcast. I found like an appreciation to balance my time. And I I let you guys speak because that's all I have to say about it. All right, go sack on. Uh, how do you feel about the community actually being addicted to RS, and how important is it to find a healthy life balance between in game and real life? Well, I think that's just kind of pretty obvious to to answer that. If I'm going to be honest, in the sense of finding a healthy balance, um, I think everyone should find that for them own selves, their own selves, and it'll be different from every other person. And alluding back to a conversation that I mentioned prior with the, I was talking to Ginger Beardy um a couple days ago or whatnot he talked about how, like bodhi actually genuinely loves this fucking game to this day like he was having beers over at bodhi's place or something and there were a bunch of people over and apparently bodhi would just like get up randomly okay go back inside the house and just i don't know just start like load up a game of lms or something and bodhi plays like what he says at least is 14 to 12 hours a day and then he works out and then he has his balance that works for him like for someone else, a balance might be six hours, two hours, four hours, nine hours, ten hours. It could be any term of time of length, right? But the only time that it only gets detrimental is when it's negatively impacting other things that you want to be doing or you expect out of yourself or out of your life. Yep. So I think it's great for everyone to find a balance, and that balance is different for everyone. Well, um, well said. I, I just I, think. Sorry, go ahead. Finish, and then. I'll, yeah. No, I guess I was just gonna address the addicting part, right? Yeah. I guess it also is the same reply that I would have given in the sense that um you know when you initially grasp something for a while it may take a hold of you um obviously that's not necessarily a great place to be when you're when you're putting other things to the side but obviously it's like there's this like gray area you do it for a week or two that's fine you do it for a month maybe that's okay a couple months maybe still but like when it when it genuinely becomes something that's actively holding you back in your life then yeah maybe it's maybe it's time to like take a take a step back and reevaluate how you can obtain what you want from your life yeah it was interesting having max on the cast uh he box young mm -hmm. which um he's he's you see completed his recent tweet he's completed 200 mil all what you see his recent tweet about of how, him like, not like outside the PDM. of skilling yeah. yeah outside of skilling there's not much that's game as well. <laughs> yeah <laughs> no so the cool thing is like like we had a really i really enjoyed that podcast by the way if you haven't listened to it it's just like totally different vibes than most but um he was talking about like how his balance 
you know and i like i like the way you put the balance is like it's different for everybody so like people like gatekeeping balance for some people is just like kind of cringe um you know like oh you i only play like two hours a day so if you play any more than that you're like addicted or something you know but um mm -hmm. you know he would play a lot because he was going for 200 mil all but he still would keep track of his fitness and stuff and you know maintain a healthy body and you know he would do other things outside but he still had this end goal of completing 200 mil all and then he had at least a plan of like okay then he can continue and he was talking about like these kind of like energy things like he kind of gravitates towards something in his life and then like he's almost like got to complete it to like eventually move on and so his balance yeah. was to like for years spend his time like completing this goal of his and then at that time he could like feel relieved almost and be like okay i can, I can move on to like the other things i want to do with my life but it was never a detriment to him like he understood like this was this was his plan so and it wasn't um you know other people could obviously argue anybody that's gonna judge anybody else's life could argue otherwise but i thought it was like pretty cool the way he put it and i'm not doing it justice but the way he put it was like a lot more yeah no for sure yeah. i'd be i haven't actually checked out that podcast yet so. it's a it's amazing like it's i don't mean one, to yeah. fucking like toot my own horn it, it's not my own horn either it's his but like I thought it was a really good conversation. I find it so nice when I don't know who the guest is and then I watch it. I'm like, I wish I knew who this guest was before, but now let me, you know, be more invested. Just I does he yeah. have any YouTube presence or Yeah, he presence? does he has really good music. He has I think Sakon would really love his music taste. He's into like house and stuff. And he'll just have like these he kind of does something similar to me. In fact, I think he did it before me, so I and I didn't know of him at the time so i didn't really neither of us copied each other but we have these hour-long skilling videos and he'll just put on a okay, playlist yeah, of yeah. something but no uh the other interesting thing is like so Sakon, you're from canada and lops you're from america or like america united states right yep yep and so he's like from netherlands fin I netherlands or yeah maybe, maybe netherlands choice. I think yeah, it's Netherlands. Wrong, Netherlands. Yeah, I think. Yeah, it's not, it has to be. I'm, dude. I'm so ignorant. I'm not so ignorant, but I am ignorant to like countries over there. I'm like typical American. He's from the Netherlands. Yeah, I yeah. just looked at it. For okay. A while. Yeah, that that's right. So, um, it what's interesting is listening to anybody, and same thing with like Ari Slash from Finland and others that I've had on the cast. It's like, it's almost like hearing even just about their RuneScape experience, and then like a little bit about like their routine in life so different than like the united states like the perception Man, i don't want to get into a pessimistic conversation about culture differences right now <laughs> i'm gonna refrain from that personally because i guess i'll just overarchingly say i'm not really impressed with the current culture that we have in the north americas as a whole actually you know what i'll, I'll make it I, I know i wanted to talk about music so i might just kind of like lead into it or i was talking to someone <laughs> recently about music and like how in Europe, I feel like they just have a better variety of electronic music. And I'm not yeah. saying that's a detriment to North America, but just to make it more like up uplifting and rather than detriment, like, you know, something negative. I just think that, it, you know, I'd really enjoy being in, in Europe for its music scene just because like going out, going out and experiencing nightlife or going to like a rave out here, you get very typical, you know, normal EDM rather than you know specific yeah. niche like going to like a techno bunker in berlin would be a super cool to experience like just i don't know i feel like so i, have yeah, a, I don't really know how that was linked in at all but so i have a question like about you know we'll, we'll kind of switch gears to music because we don't really hardly talk about this but first thing i kind of want to relate it to is why do runescape streamers listen to a lot of electronic music like what is the either trance or techno or some house here and there or just D and B. I guess D I don't even want to put D and B in the category, but like it is still, you know, electronic music. What is that? Why do RuneScape? And I honestly I'm kind of unfamiliar with other games on Twitch. Like most of the time people just won't have music, but RuneScape's definitely a game where you need to have music. Not need to, but <clears throat> what I don't what... think it's just RuneScape. 
because like even like the top like Overwatch streamers, like when I was watching XQC when he was streaming Overwatch, he would listen to a bunch of electronic music, whether it be hard style. Uh, so is that just like bass. our generation then? That's just I I think it's just like right now and also uh, pace of the game. So like. Mm. this game isn't like insanely fast paced but when you have fast paced music it makes it go by quicker you know what i mean yeah like when you swing your fucking blade of sail door or you use a whip that is two and a half seconds in between each hit right yeah yeah two and a half seconds <laughs> well, in between 2.4 but yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just just slightly under so like it just like increases i i feel personally it just increases that pace of like how you how slow this game is it just kind of makes it seem faster but in other games like overwatch that is such a fast-paced game that those songs actually kind of like keep that momentum interesting okay so i want to just bring this up real quick have you ever like ran on a treadmill or just done like pretty intense exercise and then came back to runescape and realized how fucking slow everything goes Mm -hmm. (laughs) dude I, i mean like even just recently working on like the job sites and stuff i'm literally like like not sprinting up and down stairs but i'm moving up and down stairs i'm fucking like speed walking across the job site to get my job done and then i come home and i'm relaxing and it's like wow i only catch this fish every five ticks unless i fucking cut my log (laughs) like that's a fucking fuck ton of half cut your log don't even cut it you just have to pretend like you're cutting it yeah 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 no, I it's think, uh, it's weird because I remember doing a nightmare kill, like a solo nightmare after I had like ran sprints. This is like a year ago. And then like I came back and I was like, holy, like, dude, like this whole game is lagging or something. Like everything felt like three times as slow. It was so weird. Do you play other games, Sater? I play chess. Okay. I mean, like, do you play other like, like, do you play any first person shooters? Uh, I used to play um, like... I used to play Call of Duty, Modern Warfare. I would go on, like, like... these, like, three-day full binge of, like, just play Overwatch for, like, 12 hours a day. And um, coming back to RuneScape after playing a game that's that fast-paced is just this game is so sluggish. It feels like because of that, like, kind of input delay of, like, when you click the next tick, it literally feels like I'm on an Aussie world if I don't play RuneScape, like, for a couple days. Now, I'm I'm one of those people that could... If I gave myself the chance to get addicted to a first-person shooter, I would definitely spend yeah. like multiple days off of this game to do that. But mm-hmm. I like don't even put myself in that situation because I, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I know it could uh, happen. I res- I respect it. You have your goals that you want to set or like accomplish, and it's like veer- veering away from those just like sets you back by however many days you don't do them. Yeah, and when I'm really not feeling RuneScape, that's like the best time. What I've realized, like I've started recognizing, like, hey, if I'm if I'm logging out, I can log out and I can go do something like good for my body or good for mm-hmm. my brain. And so like, you know, chess, I don't know if that's good for my brain, but I like doing like little puzzles and stuff. But then like body wise, like if I'm logged out of RuneScape, it's so much easier to be like, okay, like I have time. Let's do a little workout or something. I think uh, it's interesting. I don't know. I, I took that, that in a different regard in the sense that, you know, how like RuneScape so slow for everything. I also think that we're in an era where we're expecting near instant gratification or like, yep. yeah, so we live true. in such a fast paced time that it's kind of nice to have something that's so slow. I don't know. Yeah, no, it's sometimes I think just how fucking perfect this game is and almost like how cool it is to have a game that actually goes this route where it's like finishing collection log is like a fucking hundred years, <laughs> like just something stupid, you know? Yeah. Like, I kind of just like that aspect of it where it's like, this is actually an endless game if you make it that. Where, like, no other game really has that ability. That replayability? Yep. Like, I look at Hey Jace, and I'm like, god damn. Yeah. Like, he's an inspiration, and the reason I say that is because, like, he takes the game, like, beyond the limits that, like, a lot of people, like, see the game as like he just keeps fucking going and i just find it like i don't know i find the game like more beautiful like with players like that that like go beyond and beyond like because a typical player would probably get two in a mill all and then just fucking dip but to see people like go beyond the limits like jesus and so it's like damn 
I don't know. It makes the game seem more cool. <laughs> That's not the right word, but I feel like this game just has a like uh, a very strict following to it, almost. And there's a lot of like endless goals that you can have. Yep. That people, I think, at a certain point, people probably thought like you know, oh, I mean, when they first made this game, I think devs genuinely believed it was near impossible to like have one person hit 99 let alone you know max all their skills yep then eventually we push the goal post to like 200 mil all and i guess it's nice seeing that goal push continuously goal post sorry that's what's crazy push. is and like jace think... is like always been one to do that right with like yeah. 200 mil yep. and then i think after that it's like all pets and then he also wants to do the collection log at a certain point right yeah he's been doing like both yeah yeah but uh shit i lost my train of thought did you see uh did you see what will just wrote he asked if we could get a sh shout out to don uh key dick dude don yeah dude don key dick is one of the homies <laughs> did you say do you know don <laughs> say his name fast for me what what were you gonna say second do you know don <laughs> <laughs> anyway Okay, moving on. Like, that one's, like, so, like, obvious. Anyway. You know, like, I tried to do Whale a solid, but he gave us, like, the most generic one he yeah, could. Yeah, true. Like, what, like, Whale really fucked that one up for us. You know, we tried to hit Whale with a solid. Oh, my. I got my recorded. boss. I got my boss today so good because his brother's name is Tony and his name is Mike. And I was like, oh, my God. Do you know, like, Tony, Tony Hawk's brother's name is Mike? And he was like, Mike? I was like, yeah, Mike Hawk. And he was just... He just fucking shook his head and said, I'm glad you're going to be gone tomorrow. <laughs> so Defy just posted a, a topic now that I looked at my notifications. No interesting question. Just looking forward looking forward to the content. Two people I just wish I knew better. Humble. Love that guy. You know, I, I haven't paid uh, my tax right now. Uh, <laughs> I haven't actually caught too many of his streams, but... He streams really he, late. I'm like, he yeah, streams so late asleep. for me. And like, I go to bed at like 8 p.m. or 9 p.m., sometimes 10 uh, when I'm, you know, feeling dangerous. But when I first came back like two months ago or a month ago or whatever, like I saw a couple, but that's also because I was on that other sleep schedule, right? But uh, I haven't been able to ever since I fixed my sleep schedule. So. Yeah, yeah, my, sometimes, yeah. yeah, sometimes I wake up early enough to catch, like, the end of his stream, but it's just, like, I fucking love the way he interacts with his chat. I wish I could watch more. Yeah, Defy has been, been streaming for so little, and he's grown so big. Oh, it's amazing. Like, that, um, I mean, it's, it's cool because you could be a new streamer that wanted to stream, and sometimes it almost feels like you're too late to start. Mm-hmm. But then, like, you see people like him, and there's others as well that just start off streaming within, like, a year. And, you know, they've made it full-time, partnered everything, so it's... I think that also kind of, to some degree, points to, like, um, you know, some people are just bound to, like I was saying, and certain people have that quality in a stream. And I think regardless of whenever you start... If you're bound to pop, like you know pop off, it's just gonna happen. Some people are good at doing whatever is expected out of someone who streams, and yeah, yeah. Right now, I couldn't imagine starting streaming because, like, back when I started streaming, I was like, dude, there's no way I'm ever gonna like get more than like the you know five viewers that I have on my average. And then like it happened that I got more one day, and then it just kept growing from there. It's just like. You can't see progression like like with how especially then I had no like connection to say anybody except for like Safiro. That was like the only person I really interacted with. And then after that, after I started like branching out in other communities, kind of being a part of the high level community for a little bit, it was like, okay, well now I have like a leg to stand on and like people know who I am. And like if they don't know me, here's their chance to like, you know, see that I don't just like talk shit in game as jokes. I like talk shit and joke all the time. That was kind of like what kind of went through my head when I started streaming like seriously, um, like a li little more than a year ago. I think for me, when I started streaming, it was, I never really had any expectations of it. And I still kind of don't. That's my thing, right? Maybe I, 
Yeah, I remember when I first started streaming, I think it was just like, you know, pure spam. I like just started playing RuneScape. And, uh, well, so I played RuneScape as a kid. I went over this in my other podcast, my solo cast. And then I came back to RuneScape because I was like looking for something to do. I was just in that lull where I wanted to play it, I guess. And one of my friends used to watch Ian, so that's the first stream I watched. And I we were taking him through Tobs because I learned Tob the first day or the first two days I came back. And this was like right after Tob released. So Ian wanted to go on some Tobs, and I think I took him to a couple Tobs, and I saw people were enjoying watching it. So I was just like, why don't I just stream this for my friends? And that's just kind of how it started. So the time that I like started going live daily was because Say Sub to me or something. But I've never really like thought about where it's headed in a way and i probably i don't know how do i say it's something that's just like so uh i don't know it's so unfamiliar it's like so hard to like even like even for me it took so long to get to a point where i was like okay i can actually like do this like i could i could make this like my full-time gig if i wanted because for so long it was just like so half so like this isn't like a thing i can do full time but i was still trying and uh, -huh. uh i don't know it's just like it just takes so much like investment it's like you're kind of putting in all your eggs in one basket yeah that like it's not probably like the smartest thing to do but uh -huh. you know that's what kind of ends up happening is like the streamers just p start putting in all their time and effort into it and then like it becomes something but the risk involved was pretty great. And you'll also see like stories that go the opposite where people put everything in and like nothing comes of it. And it's like mm -hmm. bad. I think it's always great to be doing this personally. If I'm just going to like, if I'm ever going to proffer advice to anyone regarding that, I think it's always great for this. If you want this to ever like become a thing, I think it's more of something you do as a hobby or on the side. And if it kind of works out, it works out. I, I think it's very rare that you encounter someone who puts all their eggs in one basket. Like, I feel like XQC kind of did that, right? Uh, Yeah, for the most part. And, like, it's very rare that you hear a success story like that, right? Like, or even with, like, you say, like, you've, you felt like uh, you were kind of saying how you felt the same way. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's always good for it to be on the side. Um. But again, like, you know, yeah. there's certain individuals who like feel like this is their calling and I, it feels weird to stop someone and yeah. say like, hey, man, and the, like, then again, calling. it's like it, it almost is like that personal thing. Like sometimes somebody's sometimes you're t not putting all your eggs in one basket by doing this exclusively because you have a plan like, OK, if this doesn't work out by a certain time, then it's like then I'll move on. So it's like you do have like other plans or whatnot, but. It appears Even to people that you put Desperation can create something beautiful as well. That is something to be said, right? Like being so committed and desperate and desiring something to work out is also something that might yep. breed. No, and that's the same thing. That's the same thing with an Infernal Cape. If I didn't have a fucking desire to be like, I'm not going to even play this game unless I'm doing Inferno runs. Like, it'd mm. be really hard to like go get that if I'm like half assing it. Like you basically like a lot of people that have gotten their infernal capes is like i know i'm relating it to runescape but it's like you gotta just go all in you gotta put everything else aside and like just invest time into learning the inferno and completing it um back to music real fast uh mm -hmm. um cold one is one of those people that <clears throat> does not have the traditional quote unquote traditional um uh like music taste for the old school section he's like very hardcore like very not hardcore but very uh classic rock and like old rock even foe was sort of like that i think yeah. he's kind of transitioned yeah. he kind of listens to he's a got, lot of things now he's got a lot of metal on his playlist which i was very surprised that you know a thousand two thousand people like years ago when I found a stream when he was is my strength zero I was surprised that people wanted to listen to that because like honestly there's a lot of music I can listen to there's like very few genres I can't and that's like one of my brother used to fucking be in a metal band and I just I don't I I get the like art of like the way they like <clears throat> make their voice sound and stuff but I just don't like the very um 
like I, this is only one way to s- describe it the very metal guitar sound and stuff i like the guitar to like i i played guitar for many years i just like the guitar to sound like it has like uh emotion in it and that just sounds like hard strumming and like yeah just yeah. a few riffs and that's kind of it um I think- what were you saying about a cold one you're giving a shout That's out. It. Like, like he, he just has like one of those like non-traditional in the RuneScape section, non-traditional music tastes. Well, Jimbo plays a lot of rap as well. I yeah, mean, I guess true. he doesn't stream yeah. that often anymore. But I feel like, like PKers stream rap as well. Yeah, like yeah. Kind of I mean, when whatever. Jimbo was streaming a lot, his ver- his variety of music was like very refreshing. You'd go in there and there'd be rap. You'd go in there, he'd be playing house, or he'd be playing. What's the other shit he was playing? I don't know. Hip hop rap was a lot of what he played, though. Yeah, I'm very, I... I'm very picky with my music. Yeah, go ahead, Sagon. It's always interesting to me hearing like all these techno or trance indies, right? And I'm not saying that I don't like techno or trance. <laughs> it's always just interesting hearing people who have never like listened to a certain genre. I suppose for me, it's like rap because I grew up listening to rap almost like as it was like a saving grace to me in a way because it was like my method to. I, I don't know if I talked about this at all during my last cast. No, but, no. Um, like for me, music was like very helpful in just getting through the day. And like listening to rap was almost like therapeutic in the sense that you had like some degree of spoken word or like some deg- degree of like relatability offered through music. And I'm not saying I was out there like gang banging, but like what I, what I suppose like I'm trying to get to though is like Kanye was one of the first few artists uh who i listened to who were were just talking about like things that anyone may encounter like uh be it be it like mental strife or be it i don't know just normal day-to-day shit that anyone may face right like just moral complexity or whatever right and just hearing that in a spoken word format was just really i don't know therapeutic for me i i remember it being like a um it being like a saving grace of my childhood that i also think back to a lot I used it's to, just, yeah, I, no, I used to listen to uh, like super like indie alternative music when I was in like middle school and high school because I got a friend, like a really close friend that basically befriended me and like we did everything together uh-huh. and uh, he was really into it. And so he showed me a bunch of like bands and other artists that would like, you know, things that you just never hear of. And uh, I got really invested in like before this cast we were kind of talking about like Lopsy was saying like he really likes albums rather than just individual songs like he'll like an album will grow on him yeah and like i felt that way where it's like there was like certain albums i got really attached to and they were like meant a lot to me to like listen to and like it was i wouldn't say saving grace but i feel like like, that's been going away more and more at at least in rad too yeah Yeah, it is really sad because like you uh, pop in an album and it gives you like this mood or this vibe or this like story that you can go through. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yep. Like yeah. whatever the focus of the album is, it yeah. It's and become I was more... amazing. Like recently I re listened to like some old Kendrick albums I used to listen to when I was in like high school. And like I just like get that old like that feeling like I had, like that that stuff. I d I don't know. I, I used to be like a very nervous nervous, like uh not not like anxious or anything but like I, I would have this thing like i'm destined for something but i just can't put my finger on it right and like i would listen to this music while i was like skating at like two in the morning and like headphones just blaring and like i, I like relived that the other day laying in bed and it was just like i got that same feeling i had when i was a kid i had that same you know like just like everything the nostalgia of it was just fucking insane it's, it's crazy how our fucking brains work that way yeah even yeah. like a smell it, like you'll, yeah, you'll smell for me, you're it's like, mostly like you'll smell something and it takes you back yeah, yeah. for me <laughs> yeah like music is obviously very strong with that yeah. but yeah. also for me i've noticed it more prevalent with smell like uh i think i was dropped as a kid because i have no sense of smell <laughs> oh my sense of so, smell is so dull like i i can't i can't like identify things that are, like we had a gas leak in my house and my mom's like you don't smell that i'm oh, like god <laughs> I don't smell that, but I feel pretty good now. <laughs> like that's that's yeah. yeah. Now music is definitely like one of those things. Like and and then what? I remember uh, I would refuse to listen to certain things unless I was at a certain place because like I didn't want the effect of like that nostalgia, like that album or something, to be like tainted. 
by like mm-hmm. over listening to it or listening to it at like a, at a wrong time or wrong place. I was really uh, like superstitious about that. I was like, there's, there's a certain, so I moved. So I, so I grew up in Oregon and I lived somewhere like in a certain city for so long. And then I moved my senior year and like my senior year, I moved to like a different school and everything. And it was so, I don't know, like everything was so different, but it ended up being like my favorite year, like ever uh of like any of my childhood and um like that music now when i listen to it like i i only listen to like lit, little tastes of it <laughs> my whole stream is completely different to the music i used to listen to but sometimes i'll go on a walk and i'll just listen to like a little snip of a song and like totally takes me back to senior year it's so weird yeah there's like some songs i can still hear like my fucking wheels like with mixed in with like the sand because i used to skate at the beach so I like hear my wheels like mixed in with the sand, like that like gritty sound and that feeling, like ah oh, man. Good so for you, me. you were skateboarding at two a.m. I was driving around. Yeah, but I can I can hear the. I love driving with the windows down. So this is more younger me when I was like I don't know, kind of like in my feelings almost in a way. I don't really want to say it like that, but I remember I used to like always go for late night drives when I just was like couldn't sleep or whatever. Or I don't know, whatever the case may be. So I can I can I can relate to that in the sense that I can hear the like wind buffeting because I drive with my windows down mm-hmm. on the highway or whatever. So it definitely does take you back, transforms you into like a different period of your life, and you feel like you're almost there for sure. Yep. I wish uh, there were more people. Like you know, how, like uh, I can generally listen to any type of music, barring some genres. Like I actually don't mind country. I think metal is one of those ones that I just haven't given a chance and I, I actually I actually did kind of have a little metal phase. Not metal phase, but just I kind of appreciated. So I got Guitar Hero Metallica when I was like in freshman year of high school or something. Okay. And then uh for some reason and that was just I was addicted to Guitar Hero, so any I got Guitar Hero Aerosmith, all those other ones. Yeah. And so I was going to get it regardless. But then I was like, you know what? I kind of appreciate this. And there would be other bands on there. There was just like a few others that would like just kind of be like their like bonus tracks at the end of like a set. Uh-huh. And so I was like, okay, I, like I can kind of understand how people would like this. Um, So, yeah. But country was always <laughs> one of those ones. I think it was a meme. It's almost a meme. Like I don't actually mind country, but it's like that meme of like, you know people don't yeah, like I, it so you don't like yeah. it i don't know it's like I mean, rs3 like, i don't really like much of new country if i'm gonna be honest it feels like uh countries who's that one artist who i'm thinking of uh fuck who's a really popular country artist right now uh, artist. let's see what comes up i actually can't i don't spo- well is it luke bryan yeah like i don't really like the luke bryan type country Oh, stadium country. Is that what? Is that a genre? That's what. That's what it's called. It's like stadium country. It's like the the guys that have never done a hard day's work in their life, but they (laughs) sing like they do. Oh, okay. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. Are there uh, so? But then there's other there's other country singers that there's good country singers like so. uh, Like what they had to do was like they had to earn their country singer status by like going on a tractor for like a decade, and then they could start singing about country. They didn't even go on the tractor. They just bought a tractor and like, I got a big green tractor. And then they just started <laughs> fucking writing about it. No, but I'm saying the people that do deserve it, like they actually had to work oh. on the farm for 10 years before they could start singing. <laughs> <laughs> I think they grew up in it. And like these people didn't grow up. They grew up in like these fucking mansions in Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then figured out like, oh, hey, if I sing about this green tractor and this cold beer, <laughs> I can make millions just like my daddy did. And and, and my girlfriend that's cheating on me. Yep. Yeah. But uh no, like so I actually live in Alabama now. So like but Damn. I don't fucking go outside. So I don't like I know there's a lot of people. Like I got the only sense that I have that people are like really country focused and conservative here is like my experience on Tinder uh, like at the beginning of this year that I deleted after like 2 weeks just seeing chicks just their whole fucking personalities like country songs and like trump won the election but then they're on the other side there's like <laughs> people that like if like obviously there's both political spectrums in the dating i, I honestly despise people that will put politics in their like dating profiles yeah but like yeah it's pretty insane here 
I figure they uh, know what they want in a man. That is a good old, <laughs> you know, Republican man to sweep yeah. them off their feet, take them away from their nine to five. You know, it's interesting that you say all this because recently I matched with some girl on Tinder who was just like, my daddy wouldn't quite like you. And I was just like, hmm, okay, uh that's interesting. <laughs> Like, yeah, like, no, like, but like I'm down for I'm down for any kinky situation, dude. If you want to bring some sort of that freak aspect yeah. to it, like let's go, you know. It goes like both ways yeah. though, because like there would be chicks I'd see that are like, I like if you don't if you don't support Trump, like just get the fuck off. But then those people like if you sub, if uh, there would be like on the opposite end where it's like their whole uh, you know fucking profile is like anti-Trump and shit like that, and it's just like why are you even bring like why. Are you it's always Trump either too. It's like never like you're actual like supporting somebody else. It's just everything's against or for Trump here. It's really cringe. Yeah. Oh, this is, like like whole... this is back in like February. This is back in like January and February. I think like one of the best things I did for my mental health was not give a shit about what happens in America as much. That's probably good. <laughs> yeah, that must be. I nice. don't fucking I involve fucking myself here. in politics, but <laughs> I make the mistake by going on Reddit and checking out the homepage. Like, yeah, every morning, not every morning, but like. I'll just lay in bed and I'll fucking frequent look at enough. Yeah. yeah, I'm just like, why the fuck do people invest themselves so hard in these like conversations? You know, my dad made a good point to me, like, because I am so far out of the loop. He was like, "Well, like, you should start getting in the loop because this is like your future. Like, I'm gonna die before <laughs> shit hits the fan with like whatever's going on with the next like you know the third president in line right now. But like, you get the voice, like, like." That is like the kind of beauty of it is like we get to say, we believe. Yeah, we get to well, say, here, here's I, the difference, right? Like being informed and arguing on Reddit are two different things as well. Oh, yeah. Right? And also just 100%. like making it out your identity is a different thing. I'm not saying for people to not be involved or yeah. not care about what's going on in the world. Yeah. But I think like playing into the whole news cycle bullshit where you're like, I hate this guy. I love this guy. I want to make oh, everything yeah. about identity politics or yeah. I want to make everything about like, I don't care what your beliefs are. You just got to support a part. Like, I think yeah. it goes beyond all that. I think there's people who genuinely care, but know enough to not like get caught up in the. Yeah, um, there's a lot. Of I don't think I'm convincing anyone about, of anything. There's a lot of people that just shut their mouths about it. Like they probably would say something, but just like the fucking age we live in, just like I don't know. Yeah, just afraid of getting. I don't fucking talk about anything. If there's out. anything yeah. that's brought up politically, yeah. I'd fucking you know, shut my mouth about this it. This is like this anything. is like the line that I draw on when we talk about politics it's just kind of like the overall like view of not even like my views but like the overall like amplification of how it's been the past you know four years almost actually a little bit more what six uh, it's, years it, it's interesting i've been talking to my i was talking to my therapist about cancel culture or whatever or like feeling that way and i feel like a lot of it is just genuinely like internalized like i feel i will be like you can just go out and like you know what the funny I've seen, I don't think cancel culture is as prevalent as people think, but mm -hmm. I also think that it existing in a way is also like obviously detrimental enough, but, uh, there was some, like, there was some character who used, I think the word retard in like a negative sense. And they were like on the political like side of things and someone tried to cancel them. And then, <laughs> and then she just re replied to like their posts about canceling them. Like, and they just doubled down on it basically. And so that gave me, I don't know, I think it's too easy to just pick one circumstance and like blow it out of proportion as in like, this is how it always is. Yeah. But I, I don't really like, I, I wouldn't, I don't know. I think anything with mob mentality goes down a dark path. Yeah. Right. Now that, like that's, the, that's the main thing. I think, discussion. I think it's the mob mentality. Like I know people yeah. always say cancel culture, but like, like some of it's obviously like good uh, to like, you know, what I don't. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but what I just want to focus on and say that I think is bad and I don't like is like people who think that they're the judge, jury, yes. and executioner. It's like, so, yeah. like this is not a court of law. Like, I don't know, man. Like, yeah, sure, no, that that's where a... the mob mentality comes in. Is like as soon as somebody makes like their judgment and then like starts, <sighs> dude. I, there's things that we'll probably fucking talk about it off. I don't even want to involve it in the Sebe cast because it's just cringe to even talk about these like. Yeah, oh my god like I'm, I'm getting like worked up because of something that i saw on twitter <laughs> yeah and i'm just like think, this is so fucking pointless to talk about here but maybe i'll mention yeah it i think it's like you were talking with lopsy actually and his your guys past cast it's just better to ignore certain things it's right? so much it's better to just 
Yeah. Even if you have like that moment of weakness where like I really want to fucking respond to this, like just don't, just take a break. Yeah, you don't need to respond to anything, and you don't need to make any big deal of some online shit. Yeah, I suppose like what I don't like is like if every when people want to get their pitchforks up about something, I just don't know like if someone's genuinely done something bad and there's evidence for it, and like it's pretty much cut and clear. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like then I can kind of. I don't know. I don't want. I don't want to actually talk about it at all. Yeah, I just don't like just the idea on. of mob rule and mob mentality. I'm not a judge, jury, or executioner. Um, because the thing is, it's not like black and white, right? There's some times where you'll see someone have like some weird, like some degree of mob mentality showing, and it's like, yeah, well, this is reasonable. But like, it's but also then you not see the reasonable full story. in the sense of what they're trying yeah. to, what they're trying to actually accomplish. It's yeah. just like, well, like, who are we to do that? I don't know. It gets into this weird gray area for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So Donda, how was that second? So my experience with Donda. Okay, I will say that I've read some things online where some people don't like Donda. And you know what? I have to give you a hard disagree on that. I enjoy Donda. Um, I think as a cohesive album, it almost sounds like what Jesus, uh, what, what's that one? Jesus is King should have been like his mm -hmm. previous release. Um, I don't get why it's named Donda. Yeah, I, I, I think agree. it was just kind of like a tribute thing rather than more about him exploring in depth. Like, I feel like previously at Kanye as an artist, by the way, I just want to put out there that like, this is undisputed fact. This is not opinion. Kanye is the best artist of our time. Okay. In any medium, all mediums included. But... Yeah. Anyways, sorry with the Kanye dick writing, but um, I think with his previous albums, you kind of have like more of a cohesive message, like, or a cohesive sound or something. I feel yeah. like I loved how exploratory this album was with different direction, different sounds, and different whatevers. I just don't find that element that brings it all together. So as an album, it's it's interesting. But I, I say that, but it's just like there's not something outwardly there that you can find cohesion with regarding all the songs. But I, th I still think there is some sort of glue that is holding it all together. Just, just listening through it. Um, but it just doesn't jump out you jump out at you and it doesn't mm -hmm. have that same like you know when you like throw on an album and you're getting ready for a certain mood or vibe or whatever it doesn't have that element to it at all um standout songs for me uh i'm gonna go with something that a lot of people probably wouldn't say but i love jonah i love that song that that was a good song yeah i mean jesus lord obviously great song um no child left behind when that comes on and the album like finishes quote unquote like Every time I've listened to that song, I've just felt like crying. Like, it's such a beautiful it, song. Yeah, um, it feels like an outro song for sure. Like, a, like yeah. a good, like, it actually feels like it has closure. What I didn't like about the album, which, uh, <clears throat> like I said, it might grow on me, is, like, the repeated chanting. And, like, it felt like, and I didn't watch the full, I only saw, like, a little bit. And um, when you sent it to me, the uh, live the listening party too yeah the listening party um i only watched a little bit of it um but it felt to me like it was just very preachy so like the whole album was more toward more geared towards uh that preaching aspect rather than like the, uh, a message or like a story to be told you know what i mean so that interestingly enough that's what i really enjoyed because what i what i think i love about kanye is more about him just like looking at a piece of work as cohesive than like you know, like people could just say he's a rapper releasing a rap album, but that's not really the case when it comes to a Kanye production. Do you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. he's releasing something that's more of a cohesive, well thought out, like curated piece that involves specific people, even outshining him at certain points. But again, he doesn't care about that. He just cares about delivering a product that that is amazing, sonically at least. Yeah. What I really liked was his actually his involvement with all the chanting and kind of like biblical aspects or like biblical themes or sounds like i really liked um I don't, I don't know like the organs and the harmonics and with everything and just like him bringing that like church choir type element to an album so i can i can understand though a lot of people see like i think i was watching anthony fantano the other day like live listen to the album and give his first impressions and he was talking about how like there's something just oddly powerful 
about someone chanting and repeating the same thing over and over again. Yeah, I can see that. Um, and I don't know, it gets very emotional. And that's what I feel like Kanye excels at, is like mm -hmm. being able to deliver an emotion with a song. And I don't know, I felt, I definitely felt certain emotions listening to certain like specific songs, right? And I, he is all over the map with types of things that he's able to bring, even in this album, I should say. Um, yeah, I, I kind of personally enjoyed that aspect. I can see how a lot of people didn't. I feel like uh, like that song, Junior, a lot of people, you know, it's a banger or whatever, but, you know, he brought up the point, fact of it being one noted. Like, yeah, I, I didn't really think that detracted from it. I think there's one song, if there's songs that I don't like, it's probably like Remote Control. And uh, that one with like Pop Smoke, that's like an interlude that makes no fucking sense. I think yeah, like yeah. Pure Souls, I think. No, it's not Pure Souls. Um, I don't know, it's but when I heard television. it, yeah, yeah, I I thought as a whole, it's gonna have to grow on me. Um, but like like you said, there's just some really good songs off there too. Uh, off the grid, I think was one that I liked a lot, and Hurricane. Yeah, um, Hurricane's been like a long time coming, like eighty degrees mm -hmm. or Hurricane, whatever you want to call it. Like it's been a long time coming for Kanye fans because for like three years that's been a leak. And people were like, is this even going to get made into a song? So, great to see that song out. Yeah. I, as an overall, I, again, it's just been a few days since it came out. I've only given a couple listens. But I like the album, and I'm excited to to see how much I'll like going into the future. Because I remember when Yeezus first came out, I was like, what the fuck is this? I'm yeah. not feeling this at all. And then the next day, I listened to it, and I was like, damn, this is this is pretty good. And like years later, it just only gets better every listen. Yeah. So I, I love albums like that. And I, I hope that this is one of them because um, I think The Life of Pablo was like the last album that I didn't like at release. And then like it just started growing. But I also just, I don't know, new new music. I have to give it solid listens to like, like yeah. alone, headphones in, nothing to distract me or else I just can't get into it. Yeah, for sure. And like um, listening to Don Don stream didn't do me any justice because I wasn't it wasn't like I was full focused, focused on it. it. Yeah. Yeah. I think all the part twos are kind of suck. Actually, the OK OK part two is pretty good, but again, I think I, I need to give it more listens. I didn't get why there's part twos. So like, oh, Kanye just made a bunch of different versions of everything, and there were different like listening party versions. And I feel like he probably realized that a lot of people wanted it to be a certain because we've heard it yeah. in so many different forms. So maybe he just put out different forms of it. I don't think he should have as well either, personally. But they're there. They're more like a bonus than anything. Yeah, they're not really part of the actual album. Yeah, I know. Say has a lot to say about this because he. No, he, I, he I like listening to. Rap. I like listening to you guys talking about it because. I don't really, I mean, I'm not a Kanye West fan, but then again, that's like, I'm neither a Kanye West fan nor like, I'm not, like, I just don't listen to rap or anything. Yeah. So, uh, but I'm, I'm not going to also judge either because um, I could give my like ignorant insights on like what I think, but like, yeah, you haven't, looked um, I just feel like it's just fucking stupid when somebody gives like their thoughts on something they have no fucking business talking about. So, yeah. Yeah. But, um, We'll kind of wrap things up uh, by giving just, I want to, this, sometimes I'll end a cast by like having the guest give out shout outs, but I guess uh, for this cast, I want each of you to just name two content creators that are, I guess, underappreciated and uh, deserve more recognition and exclusively content creators for this one. So just two. Damn, you got me twisted. I already thought about people to say. All right. But you can um, only listen to. First off, off the cuff, off the cuff, um, I'm going to just say Qunix. I've been watching some of his stream. He's also really into cars. He's a king. So, I would, yeah, I would, I would really recommend everyone go check out Qunix. He has a sick, um, I think it's 1997 E36 BMW M3. So, if you're into cars. It's also stick shift. Not many of those around. A uh, pretty cool guy has great content. Actually, puts effort towards it. Unlike many people, including myself, who just don't give a shit. He actually actively puts on an amazing, like, stream as an overall. Yeah. So, I would say him. And then uh, off the cuff, random. Uh, I guess I'm just gonna scroll through the section. I see Nicole, so I'm just gonna say Nicole. Shoutouts. 
shout out to Nick Too Hard On. She's been streaming for quite some time. And she every time been. I go in there, she's she's very reclined and always positive vibes. Very I'm gonna reclined. break your rule and I also just saw Zoe, so I'm gonna say Zoe as well. Shout out Zoe R S. He finally got the rapier, but honestly, he should just I only know him as the Justy champion. Actually, you I'm sorry, I'm gonna yeah, well, I'm gonna add one more Jixie, because I love you, Jixie. Go check out Jixie as well. Okay. Thank you for the two guests. Yeah. Okay, yeah, Lopsy. No. Dude, I can't count, bro. I got dropped on my head. <laughs> I got dropped on my head, not you. No, okay, I appreciate just... I appreciate all of them. I think they will also appreciate it. So thank you, Sekon. Lopsy. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to do two and I'm gonna just say Sekon for starters. Um Aww. I'd love to see his streams thrive. That's why um when me and Seder were talking about when I could be on the cast, I, I popped the question if we could have a duo cast because I fucking love Sekon. And um yeah, this is this has been amazing. It's been great. I've had just as much fun, if not more, than the first cast. Um I, I haven't felt like the pressure I felt on the first cast of like, you know, staying on topic, talking yeah. about random shit. Um and then like number two, I'm just gonna say Mofo. Because Mofo, like everybody knows him as like the emote guy, but he puts so much fucking effort into his streams. And him and Nick actually live together now, him and Cunix. And um yeah, it's just great because I talked to Mofo a bit uh, off stream, and it's just great talking to him. And his uh, his like want to make content is as great as like my want to like just stream and have a good time. Like it, like the same energy levels. Although he has like zero emotion, um, it's like the same energy levels yeah. when it comes to you know that want for things like that. And he's just he has such bright ideas and stuff and. Yeah, I'm gonna extend that shout out also to Zoe RS. That is the boy, Ultimate Iron Man freak, like windowless van, you know, serial killer type shit. But oh yeah, no for sure. Love this guy. His latest cut race recently. Oh yeah, dude, yeah. Like straight psychopath serial killer stuff. Well, he Every went from I... smoking crack to selling it. Is what it looks <laughs> like now. So yeah, shout out him as well. No, honestly though, big shout out. I I don't want to interrupt, but I really want to give a big shout out to Jixie, man as well. I don't know. Yeah, like Jixie's I double incredible. incredible. Sorry. You know, what? Wales whole crew is incredible, so. Nah, dude, what are you talking about Wales crew? You know? They're Wales part of their crew, you know? Honestly, shit. so true. Yeah, dude, <laughs> Wales tagging along for that shit. I don't know about the other way around about that. <laughs> Honestly, one. so wide, too. Yeah. Jesus. Sack on, Lopsy. It was an absolute pleasure having both of you guys on. And I think it was a successful cast with two guests. First time ever. Thank you yeah, for pioneering this with me. We got to Thank touch on a bit of everything as well. Thank you for having us. So, audience, listen. I'm going to have... Sekon's uh, Twitch and Twitter in the description. I'm going to have Lopsy's Twitch when he makes the great comeback. He's taking a break off of streaming as of recent. And he'll be coming back. So I'm going to link his Twitch and his Twitter as well. And there was something else I was going to have linked. Oh, and the previous, uh, the previous podcast. Casts. In, yeah. yep, in the description, I'm going to have just from the last two and a half months, we've had Lopsy and Sekon on. So... Go listen to those if you want to get a more like insight on them personally. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for listening. And thank you again, Lopsy and Sakon, for being on. It was a pleasure. Thank you, King. All Take right. care, everyone. We'll end it here. Peace. Bye.